field and join Molly McGrath. Well, Reese, this is a sign of the times as Ole Miss head coach Lane Kiffin is joining me live from his practice facility via Zoom. Coach, most importantly, how are you feeling right now? I'm good, Molly. Most importantly, how are players feeling? You're closer than the me. <laughs> now, Coach, you're heavily involved in game, especially with changing plays. What about your absence on the sidelines concerns you the most? So we've got a lot of work this morning. As many of you have been in the second year together in the camp, so uh, I got a lot of trust in the coaches, in the players, and the coaches that come to train. So they get all the credit on it. They're playing great in that right for going to. Coach, what's the last thing you said to your team? Um, well, the last two training, we've been playing for this. You know, we won this game before we ever played it. So, now we go out and execute. All right, thank you, Coach. Thanks so much for your time, Reese. Back up to you. Molly, thank you very much. Louisville won the toss and deferred, so Ole Miss will get the ball first. If you're curious about whether Lane Kiffin can communicate with his team during the game, he cannot. Once the officials take control of the game, which comes at the 90-minute mark before kickoff, if you're not on site, you're no longer allowed to communicate. So uh, Lane able to talk with us, but not necessarily uh, able to talk with his team from this point forward. He was very confident, Kurt, in his team's preparation and in the staff's team. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, when he tested positive, if you think about tonight, so Monday, the coaches always build these weekday games on a Saturday schedule. So it would be after what would be a Thursday practice is when he found out. So they got all the way through their most of their work week when he could not come to the office. So I think they're confident with the communication. He's been able to address the team, uh, you know, on, on video. And, and I think uh, the assistants have their roles. And they'll play the analytics game on offense and see if they can go out there and play some football and win one. Oh, dangerous Jerry and Ely is the deep man for Ole Miss running back. They'll use him all over the field. Rock Travelstead will put toe to leather to get us underway on this Labor Day night from Atlanta. Travelstead gets it started. It will not be Ely who grabs it, but instead. Falling down and getting was Otis Reese, the defensive back, the transfer from Georgia, who slips and Ole Miss will have a long way to go to start as the, the players have flagged down on the field as we check in quickly with the Chick-fil-A impact player. Well, you touched on Ely. Okay. During the return. You touched on Ely, and he is an explosive runner. You'll, you'll get a look at him, nine. I mentioned the three receivers. Keep an eye on 13. I think he's the leader of the bunch and the biggest playmaking ability. 13 Sanders. And then the leader, C.J. Avery, on the other side. He'll have to do a good job of being able to defend that run led by Ely. And then when they when they throw, which they will a lot, Diaby's going to have to, he's really improved, gotten faster, quicker. Keep an eye on six when it comes to the pass rush. The man who caught the kick. I got double numbered right off the bat, Herbie, is Kendrell Bullock, who's a backup running back who's back there rather than Reese. So after the penalty, Matt Corral will start from his own five. He led the nation in total offense last year, right at 385 yards per game. Corral with his first pass is a completion, and it's a big gain, and it's Dontario Drummond. And Dontario's still on his feet, and he's going to pick up about 25 on the first snap of the season for the reps. Uh, two things there. Hit great patience. Nice job by Corral letting him break free. But the thing is, you get into some of these RPOs, Louisville flying upfield to try to defend the run, so conscious of the ability of Ely. It created nice, a nice passing lane there, and Corral waited and made a good throw. Ely with his first carry of the night and he is greeted right at the line of scrimmage by Monty Montgomery one of their leaders from the linebacker position. They, they are flowing right now early in this game against the run. And they are trying you know when you, when you commit you get got all that energy going you're you're really locked in trying to be physical it could set up some pass plays here. Uh, Corral was under some heat coming after him was Yasir Abdullah had to get rid of it and it'll be third and ten so after the big explosive first play Brian Brown's defense has settled down a little bit. Yeah I think Brian Brown there did a good job of, of kind of mixing up some looks he brought both the linebackers and created some confusion and doubt with the offensive line and pass protection and Corral who's had some time this time he just kind of off his back foot had to get rid of it. 
This game's important to Brian. He's an old Miss alum, played football and basketball there. And now he'd like for his Louisville defense to get off the field on third down. A little bit of running room, and it'll be a first down as Ely catches it out of the backfield, and Rebels get their third down conversion. Now, you're going to see a lot of this from Louisville. Rush three, drop eight. That's the thing that uh, Ole Miss has worked a lot on in the offseason because teams did that to them in the second half with some success, and that time, good job of checking it, letting his athlete make a play. Corral right on the money, and he's got a receiver. to Jacour Pearson, and Pearson is into Louisville territory. And another big game for this Ole Miss offense, this time picking up 27. They go so fast, we can't give you replays. But I tell you, Corral <laughs> did a good job with his eyes, looking right and then coming back to the left and finding that crease. Nice seam route. Back to the ground. Ely spun down. Take the Ely spun down as he gets inside. Reese, this this offense is as fast as anybody in the country. I mean, it, it, think of with Jeff Levy, he was on Art Briles staff it, it going back to Baylor. I mean, it's that kind of pace. Corral has Ely out of the backfield, his second catch. He has another first down in there at the 11. Hurry up, you got about four seconds here. They're actually, they're actually uh, running a player in, so maybe we'll have a little bit more time, but Reminds me so much when Baylor would create vertical seams because their ability. There's Jeff Levy who's calling the plays. It would be calling the plays regardless if Lane Kiffin were here or not. But those vertical seams, tough to defend. Henry Parrish trying the right side. He's in at running back. You know, they stretch you horizontally with, with outside run and quick pass. You have to respect that. And then if you, you worry about the run game, you come up. And then all of a sudden, they're going to get behind you with those, those seam routes puts a lot on a defense and we we asked Brian Brown the defense coordinator how do you how do you prep for this I mean I know you've had all camp but man this is this tempo is tough and he said that was his biggest concern getting ready for this offense back to Paris breaks a tackle and then lost his footing he, if he'd been able to stay on his feet I think he was going to score the other thing that happens is because of the tempo and, and the amount of plays that they have they're coming at you this will be the 10th play wears you down Parrish right at the goal line. He's going to be stopped just short. And he's the bigger, stronger guy. First he's down. got the first down there because they started set it down to the 11. So if they go right back to him. And Corral and Parrish on the mesh, and there's a flag down on the play. I don't see any movement, maybe a lined up offside? Offside. Defense, number 21. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Just trying to get lined up is a challenge. Yeah, at the Somebody, bottom, you can yeah. see his helmet. All the way at the bottom is a corner. So nobody jumped. Just uh, like you said, their, their heads are spinning right now. Ely comes back into the game, gives Louisville an opportunity to substitute 93 yard drive in a little under three minutes 10 plays so far full house tight backfield Ely pushing and Ely is into the end zone touchdown Ole Miss well, Corral had a really good drive there four or five for 80 yards to open up this uh, this first series of the season and they're just gonna after all that all that razzle dazzle tempo spread they go old school power eye formation and push Louisville into the end zone for a touchdown and scored in the red zone what is explosive as Ole Miss was last year didn't correlate to being among the nation's elite from the red zone, but just about everything was perfect on that drive until the PAT hit the upright. So not many miscues for Ole Miss on that opening drive. Kale Nation doinked it off the left upright. Six nothing, Hotty Toddy. They ran a play every 16.8 seconds yeah. to finish off that 11-play 94-yard drive. Yeah, that's the no-drink zone. When Ole Miss, Powder Blue has the ball, you're, you're just going to want to sit right down on your couch and not move. Now let's see if Malik Cunningham, and this is an offense too. They're not going to go that fast. Let's see how they respond. 
but they knew coming in. This is an offense from Ole Miss. They averaged 80 plays a game last year. Freshman Caden Costa will kick off for Ole Miss. They have a lot of high hopes for him. His first college game and deep is the very dangerous Hassan Hall, who has two kickoff returns for touchdowns in his Louisville career. This will not be his third. He took a big time hit and did not get it out to the 20. Tylen Knight among those delivering the big hit along with Robinson. Our Chick fil A impact players when the cards have it. Well, let's see how, again, Malik Cunningham and his, his offense can respond in the backfield. They lost JV and Hawkins, who was a great running back, and Jalen Mitchell now will lead a, a crew of backs. Harrell is the coach, the, the, the receiver. They've got a good group, but they lost their top two. They feel Harrell could be the guy. Watch eight. Chance Campbell transferred over from Maryland, has really settled that front. This is a defense that has to be better. And then Jake Springer, a transfer from Navy, sat out last year, was around the program. They feel, he, again, much better at the safety spot with him leading the way. Big hit there. Well, Knight blew up the blocker and uh, got the tackle as a result and hurt himself in the way. That was the aggressiveness you want on special teams. Good to see him walk off the field under his own power. This is an Ole Miss or a Louisville offense that wants to run a lot of stretch, a lot of outside zone play and try to set up play action. Malik Cunningham can run the option and also play action pass where he's dangerous. And Mitchell gets the first carry. He's had a little bit of a foot issue during practice, been able to get back in there early. And the men you mentioned, Chance Campbell making this. Yeah, game. boy. I mean, if you're an Ole Miss fan, you didn't see that last year at all. And so, you know, they, they are obviously dialed in on that run game because it sets up Malik Cunningham, as we just talked about in the passing game. The 15 turnovers is the one area. Everything else is great, but protecting the football has been the emphasis for him this camp. Cunningham going to the edge, being chased. And to throw it back toward the middle and threw it at the feet because he was under some serious duress. He was looking for Marshawn Ford, Sam Williams among those chasing you know, him. DJ Durkin, who's the defensive coordinator, he, he talked to us and, and Lane said it too that, you know, we are seeing good signs. We think they're more confident. Second year in the system, we've had some transfers come in. Mentioned Chance Campbell's really helped. Otis Reese from Georgia's helped. Jake Springer. They're moving around with a lot more speed, and we've seen that here in these first couple plays. But for no other reason, we'd like to give the Louisville defense a break. Quarterback draw from Cunningham. Malik getting up across the 25. He spun down pretty close to the marker. It was Sam Williams to get him, in, and he did get the first down. A good one to kind of steady the ship That's in the early going for Louisville. Yeah, that was a really good job, and it gives you an idea that you have to account for him. Right now, they only have three defensive linemen in the game. You got two linebackers. Think about that. Five guys in the box. And you have six defensive backs on the field for this defense right now. Three of those are safeties. Cunningham keeps it again. The quarterback run being productive as a pickup of eight for Malik. This is a this is a really good read. They're just feeling this outside pressure. And when it comes down, he's just simply reading the outside man. They commit down. You've got to account for that quarterback because he's as dangerous a runner as they have on this team. Nice job of reading that, getting around. He's very natural when it comes to zone read and speed option. Well, since the start of the 2019 season, no quarterback in the ACC has run for more yards than Cunningham. Right on target, he finds Ford for first down up at the 40-yard line. You know, after watching that first series, if, if I'm Louisville, a big part of my offense or tonight is playing defense on offense. And what I mean by that is taking your time. I mean, they're typically a tempo team, but it wouldn't hurt them to possess the ball, take the air out of the ball, try to keep Corral and that offense on the sideline. And Kirk running the ball first is what Satterfield's always been known for. And there is Mitchell finding the hole, weaving his way across the 45-yard line. Good tough run. Yep. Pick up of about six. Yeah, that outside stretch play. That, I mean, he did it at State. It's what he's known for. He was talking to us yesterday about you combine the outside stretch play, and he went into great detail about what makes it a great play when you run to the outside and you get these defensive linemen running sideways. It's a tough fit for the linebackers. 
you mix in an athletic quarterback who can run speed option, zone read, and then play action off of it, it's a lot to prepare for for a defensive coordinator. Cunningham now to throw it. Flushed out. He'll pull it down. He'll run. And he'll cross the 50 and pick up another first down. I think that's the most dangerous thing that they've got to defend, whether they spy or they got to squeeze him in the pocket. If everything's covered and he's he's trying real hard to be patient and work through his progressions, but if he takes off, you better account for him. Well, one of the guys, DJ Dirk in an Ole Miss, not all the time, but three, Otis Reese, the transfer we mentioned, will be spying Cunningham from time to time. Louisville's going to be very patient with this running game. Yeah. Satterfield talked a little bit about uh, those short games like that when they're pick up of three or so, th those are okay. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He wants to be patient with the run game, but I think you're patient between plays, like I said. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that anybody has their hands full, including Nick Saban in Alabama last year, defending this offense, right? Some teams came up with some answers. We'll talk more about how they tried to do that, but uh, based on what we saw in that first drive, this is a very methodical, smart drive so far from the cards. Speed guy, Son Hall. He slips through a couple of tackles. He takes a big hit and stays up. And that was Tyler Knight again, who I mean, ran down on the kickoff, and I mean, he is setting his hair on fire and causing wreck. <laughs> I mean, Ford's got bad intentions tonight, doesn't he? Four and blue. Watch how quick he comes up. He has not slowed down. He's running right through him. A good gain to give him a chance here at third and short, but boy, that is a physical defensive back for Ole Miss. They're tired, by the way, of hearing about Ole Miss got a chance, but their defense isn't very good. They've been hearing all of that. It's provided a lot of energy throughout camp. Well, they're fired up at the top. Look at those coaches trying to make sure everyone's on the same page. QB run, dangerous. It's the give. Little bit of a surge, maybe enough to get the first down. Sam Williams, a guy that they're really excited about as a pass rusher, playing good one defense that time. Well, the, the nose guard does a really good job, kind of this two gap, just to kind of disrupt it. Watch how he does a good job of getting low, getting his hands on the center. Then he's just kind of working to try to keep that center off the backers and let them come downhill and make a play. Really good play there. He doesn't have great size, but he's got quickness, and that time, using his burst at the line of scrimmage allowed him to kind of get in the backfield and disrupt the timing of that play. It's fourth down with that initial surge. I thought he was going to be able to get the first down, but uh, it was a little movement up front and Ole Miss able to stop it quickly. See a, a right guard checked out of the game there. You got a, a new right guard, Hudson, in the game here on fourth and short. the Cardinals did on fourth down a year ago. Cunningham kept it. Campbell's there to stop him, and he'll stop him on downs. Well, that is, they keep talking about the job that he's done at camp, just kind of settling everybody down. Here's the quarterback's read that indicates to keep it. But here is Campbell on the outside who's got the quarterback. Good call by D.J. Durkin. Eliminate the runner by coming downhill, and then you have Campbell, the linebacker, right there to account for the quarterback, Cunningham, and keep him short of the first down. Club Sandwich today. And in part by Marathon, driven forward. Ole Miss royalty, the Mannings, Archie and Eli. Speed limit on campus at Ole Miss is either 18 or 10 in honor of the uniform numbers of two great quarterbacks. And the guy who's going to rewrite and already has rewritten a lot of Ole Miss records is Going right back to work, Corral has the pass batted down. It'll be second and 10. Well, that was a great play that time by the veteran, the leader, kind of captain of that defense, C.J. Avery. Man, run pass option, tough against this offense because do you fill and make a tackle and then be out of place for the play action throw behind you? Or do you sit back and give up the run? That time he kind of played a cat and mouse game with Corral. Corral down the middle, and that too appeared to be deflected. He was he did it, yeah. you know, looking for Hudson Wolf as tight end. Let's draw that real quick. I mean, let's try, as hard as this is to try to get a replay in when Ole Miss <laughs> has the ball, let's try to, well, no, I guess we're not, they're going too fast here. Sorry, apologize. But trust me, nine, good job these last two plays. See, you can see him kind of quarterbacking this defense, but last two times, stepped up, 
and then the instincts to go up and knock the ball down in back-to-back -back plays. He's in control right in the middle. Let's see if Avery's defense can get a three and out here thanks to his two big plays on third down, and they will. Good defense from Louisville again that time. Yeah, rushing three, dropping or putting five underneath on third down there in 10. You got three guys rushing. Look at the five guys underneath, and you got three deep. It makes it for very tight windows. And that time, give the cards credit. Abdullah, nice job of reading the eyes and knocking that ball down. That was one of the things, Kirk, that they told us about Yasir Abdullah, known as a pass rusher. They believe he's athletic enough to drop in coverage. He did there. And as all Ole Miss fans know, Corral threw 14 interceptions last year, 11 of them in two games, many of them. He only rushed three, dropped eight. Yep. Patience was going to be tested as Braden Smith makes the fair catch. So the Louisville defense gets a stop, and the Cardinal offense comes back on the field when you come back. In T 5G Skycast, it's streaming live on ESPN3 and on the ESPN app. So Louisville gets a three and out against Ole Miss. Took just 21 seconds of game clock time to put Matt Corral back on the sideline. That is the place Louisville would like to see a lot of him because it's about the only place in the stadium he's not dangerous. Well, from the 22, Cunningham back to work. And it'll be Mitchell who pushes his way for four, maybe five on first down. Yeah, I think Scott Satterfield, who is, is one of the, I, I think he's an offensive mind that often, because he just made the move, into a, a bigger conference maybe people <clears throat> aren't as familiar with but I think he he relies on an offensive line as much as anybody because the way he loves to run the football and this is the best offensive line that he has had he's had some individual players but he's got eight guys this year that can play and tonight they're gonna have to lean on them to win that line of scrimmage well boot and naked something Ole Miss knew would be coming on second down and some good pressure from Cedric Johnson to bring up third down Yep. Really good job of Johnson just staying home. He's back here. He respects it, but is able to get outside. He's been drilled on this all week. The Cunningham and his speed, he wants to get outside with the ability to be a threat, not just throwing the football. He'll take off in a hurry and pick up 10 yards or eight yards for a first down. So really good job of being prepped and then executing there by the DN, Cedric Johnson. First time Louisville had the ball deep in their own end, a quarterback draw on third and long worked. And Cunningham has 23 yards rushing after running for over 600 last year. And he'll stay in the pocket here and fires high. Had a chance for the completion, but couldn't make the connection. And it'll be a three and out for the Cardinals. Something to keep in mind with this offense. We keep talking about the running game, right? And the offensive line and Malik Cunningham. Their top three skill guys, J.B. and Hawkins, Tutu Atwell, and Desmond Patrick are no longer here. They're off and moved on to the NFL. So we're, we're watching before our eyes first game the next year and I feel like they're still trying to find receivers that can make plays and win one on one on the outside. And the flag is. A sideline warning. And Lane's not here so don't blame him. Yeah, it was for, it was don't a, blame him. Yeah, I'm now. told it was against Louisville. So. Easy social media. There's, yeah, first time it's good. not a. Not a problem. Louisville was last in the ACC in punting last year, so they did what all teams struggling with punting do. They go to pro kick in Australia, and they found their guy. He's about to punt it away. First time he's kicked in American football in a game. It's Mark Bassett, a 24-year-old freshman from Melbourne. And Sanders will come up and make the fair catch. Braylon Sanders, the receiver, and Ole Miss will have it back at their own 36-yard line. And there is a flag down back during the kick holding receiving team number 26 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick first down. So Ole Miss will back up a little bit. Here's what we've got in store Saturday 430 Eastern time. Note the kick time start Iowa and Iowa State for the Cyhawk. We'll be there for that. Yeah. College game day in the game. College game day in the morning. I got a feeling they may already 
be camped out there in Ames ready for game day. And well, Natty Light ready? <laughs> so we'll look forward. <laughs> you and I will call that game in the afternoon, and then we got the big house with Washington come fresh off a mm. disappointing loss to Montana. You know they're going to be in a bad mood. Michigan looked really good in their opener, so Saturday night ABC, two big brands going head-to-head. -head. Unfortunate for the Wolverines to lose their fine receiver, Ronnie Bell, to an injury for the season. Yeah. Here's Ely getting across the 30 before he's driven out of bounds at about the 35 yard line Kendrick Duncan the transfer from Georgia Southern that they're very high on as a safety there to make the stop after the nine yard pickup. Back to the ground. And Ely is wrapped up by Avery but not before he picks up another Ole Miss first down. Again, I'm sorry we can't show a lot of these replays because of the tempo, but boy, it's fun to watch nine tonight. C.J. Avery in the middle of this defense, the most experienced, uh, one of the more experienced players in this front and the leaders, his 31st start tonight. And whether it's play action pass, RPO, or running the football, he's navigating his way through and, and making a bunch of plays. He's a Grenada, Mississippi native too, Kirk, so you know he's enjoying the opportunity to play against his home state team tonight. In fact, the center flinched there when, when Louisville moved. False start. Offense, number 51, five-yard penalty, first down. Oh, oh, there, oh we're going to get center. a replay. We're yeah, going to get a replay. replay. Okay. Hurry, hurry, watch this. Well, the center, right before he snapped it, when Louisville, when Louisville moved, he, uh, he flinched, I promise, and that's uh, five yards. <laughs> I've got a story on the center, too. We'll see if we get a chance to get to it. Luck. <laughs> this board up here with all these stories. I don't know why we did that. It's complete, and it's another catch from Dontario Drummond. And Drummond's trying to stay on his feet. Gets a block, and Dontario Drummond with his second explosive play of the night. He had a 100-yard receiving game in the bowl game against Indiana, 34 on that one. Monty Montgomery comes up, and that's the read. It tells Corral to get the ball out. And this is, again, these three receivers. Drummond can do things after the catch because of his size. He's 220 pounds. But again, Corral putting a lot of heat on these backers with that RPO game. In the slot, the former quarterback, John Rice, plumbly's into the game. But Corral goes the other way. And the contact was way too early for Chandler Jones, the cornerback, who was trying to defend Jonathan Mingo. Pass interference, defense number two. The ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Ron Snodgrass of the Big Ten crew that's officiating this game tonight. So the Rebels have it moving, getting closer to the red zone. Ely is checked out. Henry Parrish in the game at running back. Might see a little bit of Snoop Connor tonight as well. Rally in right up the gut, gets pressure, and down he goes. It is Yasir Abdullah. They slant the defensive line this way. He's going to come free. He just shoots a gap. Does a nice job there of occupying with that slant. It occupies the offensive lineman. Bring one more than they can handle, and the man that comes free comes up with a sack. Aggressive call there by Brian Brown on first and ten. In the last two years, only three teams in the country have had fewer sacks than Louisville, so that was a welcome negative play for Ole Miss. Corral trying to answer by going to the end zone. He was looking for Mingo out there, but good coverage that time. It'll bring up third and 17. Try to get these corners isolated. Chandler Jones, he's, he's in better position there than that quick slant, obviously, where he had the pass interference. But, you know, he's a veteran guy. He's played some safety for the cards secondary. He's played some corner. They just said the most important thing is he's just more committed on the field, off the field, better practice player, and they feel more comfortable now putting him out there. It's never been about his ability. It's just buying in to the, to the system. And perhaps a sense that he was just going to elevate to the starting cornerback role last year, and Keith Clark transferred in from Liberty, took that job, and he's working on the other side now. Ely back 
And headgear comes coming off of Monty Montgomery, but Ely not much on the stop and maybe picked up a yard or two. Yeah, the, again, these two backers right here, Avery, right here is Montgomery. They, they're, they're doing a really good job. The, the offensive lineman many times occupied because of the movement up front and it's freeing up seven and two in the run game anyway to come up and make plays. So Ole Miss sends the field goal unit onto the team and the longer field goals tonight are going to be attempted by the freshman from Mandeville, Louisiana, Caden Costa. He's got an exceptional leg. They wanted to try to break him in slowly, but they need the 47 yard attempt here. So let's see how it goes. Costa sends it on his way. And right down Peachtree here in Atlanta and Ole Miss takes a 9 nothing lead on the freshman's first career field goal. So that has to be considered a win for the Louisville defense. You're not going to stop Ole Miss from putting up a bunch of yards, but when they get close, you create a disruptive negative play, and that's your best opportunity, and it worked out well that time. Yeah, they got aggressive on that first and 10 after the penalty, after the pass interference. They brought pressure, and, and it may have caught Ole Miss off guard. You got to pick your spots. You know, I think a big part of what Brian Brown wants to do tonight, Louisville's defensive coordinator, is Listen, man, against this offense, we're going to give up yards. When they get in the red zone, we're going to change things up. That's where we got to clamp down, make them kick field goals. If we can make them kick field goals, we feel that our offense can score enough and, and put enough points on the board to win this game. So Louisville's defense very shaky on that opening drive. And sometimes, you know, we talked to Brian about this, too, trying to simulate oh, yeah. the pace at which Ole Miss plays. It takes you a drive or two in the game because you can't do – the exact same thing yep. in practice. Yeah, I mentioned out on that first series where it's just like it's one thing to have it in practice and you've got scout team, a uh, couple scout team huddles trying to simulate it, but then all of a sudden you get out there and there's Matt Corral. It's different speed, different kind of ex execution, but you're right, they've settled in the last two series. And the three and out, forced to miss field goal. Hassan Hall, who took a big hit last time, takes another pretty sizable hit, and he'll be stopped short of the 20 as we check in with Mahler. Yeah, guys, Ole Miss defensive back Otis Reese only played in three games last year, but he's also, he's already showing leadership on the sidelines. He was drawing up plays on a whiteboard for his secondary, telling his teammates we need to communicate better. And Reese told me he heard all of the criticism of their defense last year, and he's wanting to turn things around. And he's shown his leadership here today, too, guys. Molly, their defense played better when Otis got his eligibility. He transferred from Georgia, he played 25 games for the Bulldogs. He's from Leesburg, so back in his home state tonight, wanting to have a good showing for the Rebels. Hassan Hall is a running back. Cunningham's going to throw, looking at the outside. He misfires. Just to put in perspective for people that aren't familiar with, with Ole Miss, first year with Lane Kiffin, but also first year for D.J. Durkin as a defensive coordinator, putting in a new system with a lot of protocols and, and, and things that didn't allow a lot of defensive coordinators, but in the first year of a system, not practicing in the spring, not being able to do things in camp and putting in a new defense, I think it took a toll on them. They were, it was one of the worst pass defenses they've had in school history. And so they were anxious to get back to work and get excited and get ready for 2021. Well, they are playing much better on defense right now. Mark Robinson, backup linebackers, in there to make a play. And as good as Ole Miss's offense was a year ago, they were equally bad. 118th in scoring defense. Remember last year, 127 teams played total yards for yeah. 128. 127th out of 28 in total yards and toward the bottom of passing. Yeah, the, they gave up 38 points a game. It's the worst since 1915. But don't put that on Durkin in this defense. I think it has to do with second year, brought in some transfer players, got better athletes, and now they understand the scheme better. The previous play they're flying the around. Review for potential targeting. And so Robinson had the big hit, and our friend Bill Lamagne is here in the booth, and he is pointing to the crown of the helmet with Robinson. He's not defenseless, so you'd be looking at a crown of the helmet situation, Bill? He comes in in a wrap-up position, but he makes the mistake of dropping his head, and he does come in with forcible contact. I won't be surprised if replay takes and makes this a, uh, a targeting foul. That was a big hit it has to be confirmed all aspects of targeting when you go to replay and there are different uh, criteria for defenseless players and not that's that's correct the other part to it is 
The other part to that will be is that he comes in with that crown of the helmet. You look for an indicator. Dropping the head down is an indicator. So, Bill, for the fans that are out there saying, that was that's football. That was a great hit. What is happening to the game? Go ahead. He's, he's got to keep his head up. Okay. That's what he's got to do. Right. And these are gifted athletes, and they can make that split-second decision. So he's. Met, I think he's made a mistake on his part, and we're going to end up with and, a target. And, and for people, they think it's to protect the ball carrier. Well, and this one this here, one, that's, yeah. what, that's what I'm it's saying. protecting him. Right. I, he's, I just want you to he'll clarify break that. His, he'll he break his neck. Personal yeah, of course. foul, targeting, defense number 35, 15-yard penalty, and an automatic first down. Number 35 is disqualified for the remainder of the contest. Uh, it's a proper call, but a tough one for Robinson for sure, because there was not necessarily malicious intent outside of a tough football play there. But as Bill so eloquently pointed out, this is to make sure the game is as safe as possible. So he no longer has to take the walk of shame to the locker room. We're all glad of that. But and that Mark Robinson is done. For that was a third down take getting Louisville off the field. And now they they get a first down to keep the drive alive after that penalty. See if they can do anything with it. So first down from their own 36. Hall is the running back. And Hassan has it and he is greeted. And I'll tell you this. Ole Miss. They, they are striking yeah. tonight. Is Springer a guy who's going to have to have a lot of big plays tonight makes one here. Yeah. And, and, we did the uh, the Georgia Clemson game the other night. We didn't have by the way an offensive touchdown. It was a great game. It was a close game and there were a lot of hard hits and this game at least early when when Ole Miss's defense has been out there they are they are bringing it especially in the back end with the backers and safeties. Cunningham needs eight a little pressure coming from the outside and Hall is hit immediately. And Quentin Bivens in there from his nose guard spot. He's been really active. You know, I mean, we keep talking about maybe some of these backers and what they're doing, but it is nose guard spot. Watch how he's working through. A lot of times these guys just are eating up space, but not Bivens. Look at him. He's bouncing off of linemen, getting into that backfield. 94 is off to a great start tonight. Well, Malik Cunningham has hit only one of his first five passes, and now flag flies. False start. Yep. False start. Offense number 61. Five yard penalty. Third down. And Brian Hudson, former Virginia Tech Hokie, is called for getting a little anxious. So that'll be third and long. Now third and 11 needed for Cunningham, who I was about to say he's only completed one of his first five passes for five yards. But the clock is starting to roll. So Malik will have enough of a kickoff game. Ole Miss with a touchdown, missed extra point, and a field goal. And that Rebel defense allowed just 54 yards. That's the fewest in her first quarter in the Lane Kiffin era. They also had a shutout quarter, just six shutout yeah. quarters. And a couple of them came against Vanderbilt this year. So that's as well as Ole Miss has played in defense in quite a while. Cunningham who hasn't really gotten it going passing yet, converted one third down with his legs, but yeah. this time he's going to be stopped short. I was going to say, first quarter, a long way to go tonight, but if you're Lane Kiffin sitting at home and watching this and, you know, anxious, you've got to be pretty happy with all the adjustments, all the effort that they put into this defense in the offseason to make them better, become a complete team. One quarter in, the quarterback you're facing is one of five, and they're holding up very well. And Kirk is, is watched and hope he can walk it off. And Malik Cunningham was hobbling just a bit as he went to the sideline, the Louisville quarterback. And Bassett is on to punt it away for Louisville. Now the delay of game. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. So perhaps just to give Vassett a little bit more room to aim the punt in the direction that he wants to. They had Springer out there to return it, and now they're sending Braylon Sanders back out to return. Perhaps 
Springer, the defensive back, was there just to make sure nothing was up, and now they're pretty certain it's going to be planted, and Sanders is out there. And now the official stopping play again, and that will be greeted with some unrest by the fans who have made the trip over. Or Please reset the game clock to 14 minutes and six seconds. Start the clock on the snap. And Kirk, you mentioned is Lane Kiffin sitting at home watching for those who might just be joining us. Lane Kiffin tested positive for COVID-19 over the weekend. Tells us he's only experiencing mild symptoms. Molly McGrath talked to him uh, just before kickoff. So he is staying home. His team 100% vaccinated, so no players missing the game tonight as a result of contact tracing or anything of that nature. Going to let the punt roll. Sanders couldn't get up to make the catch, and Louisville will down it inside the 10-yard line. One of the things that Louisville has had to try to defend, especially these backers and these RPOs, and puts a lot of stress on them because you, you're forced to either step up and defend the run, and if you don't, you can open up some some running lanes, and if you come up, then you got to deal with these. You know, these these great throws. Corral has such command of this offense, such a feel. Look at his head, up where it needs to be, finds those little creases and seams, and gets the ball in a hurry to a very talented group of receivers. Now, Coach Brown has done a good job of kind of settling in, making some adjustments. The way that opened up in the first series, it looked like Ole Miss may, may score on every possession, but they have made some changes. Now they're down 9 nothing, and they have Ole Miss pinned back here. New Connor into the game for Ole Miss. Connor running across the 15 and running through tacklers before Kendrick Duncan finally gets him on the ground. But what a good block there. Uh, nice job by Caleb Warren getting up to the backer and open that up. And see now, like you said, a third back in that backfield. A good depth at receiver, good depth at running back for Ole Miss. Ole Miss the first drive they took it 94 they needed 93 on this drive and they're off to another good start there is a strong completion to Braylon Sanders a guy that Kiffin believes could potentially be a high draft pick at some point. And see this is the combination of the Baylor stuff with Jeff Levy who's calling the plays and here is Lane Kiffin did he the kind of pro style offense that he ran at USC and he's run, he's run his whole life. So it's a combination of the two systems that are playing out and makes it so hard to defend this offense. Marrying those two together Lane told us that Jeff knows the Baylor stuff by heart He doesn't have to look at a sheet or anything sometimes before a series starts just a little refresher on what he's going to look for In the other aspects of the offense corral going to work Sanders broke in he threw it out I thought it was interesting to hear Lane talk about and, and almost in all of the respect and how tough it is as a play caller to Jeff Levy like what no matter where the ball goes He's already got to play and he said it's just kind of the Baylor way Art Bryles just Kendall Bryles uh, offense number two was in the pocket and throw through the ball in an area where there was no player in the vicinity an eligible receiver lost it down to spot of the foul second down it's actually a good call looking back at that because corral was in the pocket and his one receiver sanders who was over 13 in that direction he was confused it almost looked like he was either not running a complete route or almost like blocking uh, you see him up at the top watch watch how he just kind of He's the one receiver that's over there, and he's just kind of not running around. I think that was the indicator for the official to see it and throw the flag. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of that call. We have to get Bill on there. I, I think it was a miscommunication. You know, in the era that I officiated in, you gave the receiver, the, the quarterback, Even, the benefit of the doubt on a, a turn inside versus a throw outside. They're telling the officials these days, don't try and read minds. Right. If there's nobody Billy. there. But Billy, the, the receiver not even looking, he's not even really in the play based on he's just kind of running without looking back. Is he still considered a receiver in the yes, area? Yes, he is. Okay. All right. Big completion to Rodgers. There's two in a row for Chase Rodgers. We caught the last one now, and it'll bring up a fourth and short. And Ole Miss is aggressive. They've got a book here. They follow the analytics. It's specifically designed for this. This is an area where you're not surprised to see him go. It's the first time without Lane Kiffin. Corral, he can run. He gets the first down and gets down. And the flag is going to come in because after the slide, you got to let up. And Corral gets up. He's a tough guy. Yeah, he is. 
I, I asked DJ Durkin, what do you think of two? Even though you're a defensive coordinator, you go up against him. He said, hardest working guy on our team. Says a lot when the defensive coordinator says that about the starting quarterback. 5 a.m. He's over there working out. He takes a big hit. There's no chance he's coming out. <laughs> But uh, good decision, by the way, on fourth down and short instead of forcing a ball in there. Remember the turnover issue last year when teams dropped eight? Sometimes he would try to squeeze it in. Targeting. Oh, yeah, that's a good call. Defense number 38. The play will be under further review. That was Jack Fago that they got for the targeting. He really almost looked like both of them got in there. Seven. As well, Montgomery. Uh, I think not seven. Be much doubt about that. Yeah. Right? And also, you have, when the quarterback slides, you have to let up too. Yeah. Defenseless yeah. player. But I, I just want to say that for for by Ole Miss and what they're looking at, not just a big hit. And like I said, both these guys came in there, but the fact that he pulled that down to take off. For the first down is huge play. Well, here's the here's the question though, Kirk. Is Avery they said hit. 38, but I, th I think Montgomery it's seven Montgomery that, that got the hit on. Montgomery hit him, but Fago's the one who dropped his his head. Mm -hmm. But it, I think Avery had the contact. Let, let me ask Bill this. Or Bill, Montgomery is it rather. possible? That, that both could <laughs> that both could get run for it, targeting. It, it'd be history if it happens, but it is possible. The other thing is, if replay dis says that the one hit that was called wasn't targeting, they can call the other one and correct the number for the targeting. So we're going to see somebody go on this. Do you agree that, that it looked like seven actually made the hit? Seven made the hit. Uh, but 38 lowered his head. Yes. But seven made the, the collision. But both of them, it appears to me, both of them hit him in the head, and he's a defenseless player. Yeah. A replay official tonight is Rick Nelson. And Rick's already been busy. They've already had one ejection for targeting tonight. Mark Robinson, a linebacker from Ole Miss. And now we'll see who gets tagged for the targeting or whether both might. Here's another look at the sky cam angle and Bill just in terms of once the slide starts in any contact whatsoever I mean I know we're dealing with the targeting here but what's the rule and what's the coaching point for defensive players once a quarterback starts to slide once they start to the slide if you're not already committed for the hit you have to be already be in that motion for the hit after review, personal foul targeting defense number seven. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down and number seven is disqualified for the remainder of the contest. He's the Avery's the leader nine Montgomery is kind of the emotional passionate linebacker that this team feeds off of. He's Kirk, he's led the team in sacks the last couple of years. He's a very vocal, animated yeah. guy. That is a that is a significant loss for the Louisville defense. It's like OKK 11 will go in for him. Nick OKK is a red shirt junior from Smyrna, Tennessee. And he'll have a lot on him now. Luke Altmyer's in at quarterback now as Snoop Connor is knocked down by Colt. Luke Altmeyer, the freshman from Starkville, stepping in and uh, corrals back out there now. How about Jeff Levy as a play caller? He goes right at OKK just to see how he's playing and how he's going to try to defend the run coming at him. Give to Snoop Connor. Connor makes a man miss and gets down to the five. Again, OKK again. Second play, Levy goes into the middle again to that defense. And the man that you mentioned missed was 11. So fresh into the game, two plays, and all of a sudden you got to adjust to this tempo and the speed of these backs. Corral pulls it. Matt going for the end zone. Touchdown, Matt Corral. Well, whether it was by design or not, all three plays going at OKK. Watch him here now trying to 
do the best job that he can on this zone read. He tries to get outside off of a block, and you can see the speed of Corral, who's known for his ability to throw, but if you've ever watched Ole Miss play with two at quarterback, has plenty of wheels to make you have to respect Side that aspect of his game. Ole Miss, five-yard penalty on the try. Well, Ole Miss has the offense out there after missing the initial extra point. And let's see if this changes the thinking at all. And it appears that it will rather than go for two to try to get that missed point back. If you didn't know, what 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 kind of coach do you think he would be? What, what It's almost like he has to be a special strength, teams coordinator. Strength, strength, or strength coach, coach or special teams coordinator. Yeah, that's, coordinator. The, that's right. the look. Yeah, that's right. the look. You got to have that look. <laughs> that is... He, he, that is I don't know if you go study that somewhere as a GA and then you just advance to becoming a special teams, but that's the look right there. That's, that's it. That's it. That's the the movements, the eyes. Da -da, da -da. I mean, look at it. Hey, Coleman Hutzler, who is <laughs> communicating the decisions of the coordinators, Elaine Kiffin chose not to name anyone as acting head coach for the night. But he's sending his special teams unit out there to kick the extra point. Okay, they changed, they changed the penalty. They're now taking it on the kickoff rather than this. So perhaps that was causing some of the animation, but everything is put to bed as Costa knocks it through and the Ole Miss lead is now 16 to nothing and the Louisville offense needs to get going and get going now. One crispy can stretching into next Monday, the U.S. Open Women's Championship Saturday afternoon on ESPN. Our buddy Chris Fowler will be there for that. Saturday night football from the big house, Huskies and Wolverines in the men's championship at the Open Sunday afternoon. The debut of Monday night football, Ravens and Raiders. Don't forget, Peyton and Eli Manning on ESPN2 with their alternate broadcast. Have you, have you joined them yet? I, I joined them in one of their rehearsals. It, it, I have it, not. It, it's going to be a lot of fun. Poor E. I mean, you I have Peyton been, in there throwing man. jabs. You got to have your head on a swivel with Peyton. <laughs> Hassan Hall. Hassan Hall, dangerous kickoff return man. As I've mentioned a couple of times tonight, but Ole Miss has done an excellent job uh, covering kicks, though. That's the best return of the night for Hall. Getting across the 30. Uh, so Malik Cunningham back on to the field. He's only hit one of his first five passes. He is their leading rusher with 33 yards on five carries. They haven't been able to get much else going uh, on this offense so far. The freshman Travion Cooley is now in it running back. Reese, like we talked about with this offense, it, it's all built around their running game and, and making the defense respect and fear the running game to set up their play action. Replay official has stopped the game for potential targeting on the last play. Wow, another one. My goodness. Get her, get her face mask up, gentlemen. That is the issue because I know it frustrates fans sometimes when the game is slowed down, but both of the calls have been proper ones so far. Uh, that I, I, that's, that's not it. It's a, I think it was a block just to the right of the ball carrier. But there was an Ole Miss player coming down, and mm, there you go. Yeah, he got, he got blocked. So let's take another look here. here right here's here, the right block. It's that one right there. Yeah, that's what they're looking at. The block against Dontario Drummond. Let me get a number there for. Now Drummond was the one. Actually, double number again. I think it was Keys who took the hit. Yeah. And the one delivering it. It looks like maybe it's Peterson, 29. It is to Barry as Peterson still trying to get a clean look at that jersey number to make sure. I don't want to cast aspersions. 
Yeah, that looks to be it. And taking Wild Rod Snodgrass, our on the field official in the white hat, Rick Nelson, the replay official. Okay, Bill, explain to this why this would be fall into the category of targeting. We have a player who's defenseless because it's a blindside block. The guy's coming from the inside to the out, and he can't see him coming. So, he, so he's protected. After review, personal foul, targeting, receiving team, number 25. Half the distance to the goal from the 25-yard line, first down. Again, okay, I, now the question is, do they get the right number? The number is 29, 29. There we go, 29. <laughs> well, you have to feel for these guys who... You know, it look, it's a safety issue, and by saying this, I'm not questioning the call at all, but they work hard to try to get to this game, and now Peterson joins Monty Montgomery being ejected from the game for targeting fouls. And it pushes them back inside the 15-yard line, and for an offense, it's still trying to kind of find the rhythm. So it'll be... First down from the 13. There's the freshman Cooley. He's got home run hitting ability, but Ole Miss is all over the place. So there is a flag in the backfield. DeAndre Prince, Chance Campbell on the stop. Holding offense, number 83. Half the distance to the goal. First down. That's the tight end, Marshawn Ford. Yeah, they, they call the holding here, but I cannot take my eyes off of the middle linebacker, 44, Chance Campbell. We did not see this all year last year from Ole Miss. They're actually holding him. They're holding him. The Maryland transfer has made such a difference to this front seven. The coaches talked all week to us about wait till you see 44, and now that we're seeing it, we completely understand what they're talking about. We saw it in the first series, and he continues to play very well and provide leadership with making the calls and getting people lined up and getting off of blocks. In the four games, you saw Chance averaged 11 tackles per game. He was honorable mention all Big Ten linebacker. Cunningham's getting a little pressure from the back, and he's hit as he throws, and it winds up in the first row. It was Tyreekus Tisdale with the pressure. And then, now this time, we're going to watch him. He's going to spy. you got to always have a spy on Cunningham because he's a lot of times going to pull it down. And again, he's just his presence there. You, you know, you got the pressure from behind with Tisdale, but nice job of Campbell being in position yet again. I'm just mesmerized. It's a defense that could not do anything right last year. 38 points a game, 519 yards per game, 312 through the air. And so far, man, they have looked. DJ Durkin's got to be fired up for the way these guys are playing. And Durkin in his second year at Ole Miss, defensive coordinator for Jim Harbaugh at Michigan, also worked under Urban Meyer and Will Muschamp at Florida, and his defense is flat balling. Mitchell's back into the game, and he's tackled again. Tisdale, two in a row. How about Tisdale taking on a double team and getting off it, and there's Campbell again. Kind of a cool angle here. Look at him take that double team on. Campbell coming down. Tisdale gets off of that double team. So the running game, null and void. And if you blow up the, old, the uh, Louisville running game, you're putting Cunningham and any quarterback for that matters, but, but especially this offense, just not made to have that running game taken away from him. Only one third down conversion tonight, and the Cardinals need 18. Cunningham gets it out quickly, hoping the running back can make a play, but not much running room for Mitchell. A.J. Finley's there to stop him, and it'll be fourth down. You know, one of the things they've tinkered with this year for Ole Miss's defense is DJ Durkin worked with John Haycock at Iowa State. And if you're a college football fan, you should be listening to the name John Haycock, Iowa State defensive coordinator. There are a ton of coaches over the last three years, four years, that have gone to Ames, studied his package, where they have three down linemen, two backers, six defensive backs to get more speed on the field. And it gives you more versatility. And that's something that Ole Miss is definitely mixing into their package, not just tonight, but I think you'll see that all year. Bassett to punt it away. Braylon Sanders calling for the fair catch, and he makes it with his feet right at his own 44-yard line. So Ole Miss already up 16. Have a couple of really long touchdown drives. Good field position this time. 
established as sponsoring five ongoing clinical trials to fight a variety of childhood cancers. And our thoughts with everyone who continues to battle that dreaded disease. Henry Parrish getting the carry for Ole Miss going to the edge. Short pickup on first down. There are all the cards. There's Dwight from the office. Yeah, you can see the, <laughs> all the different signals and how quickly they get things signaled in. Right now, you got two running backs from Ole Miss in the lineup together. Nice little wrinkle here with Parrish and Ely. 25 that time. They kind of have him lined up there at a slot. Just get him the ball and try to get him the ball in space. Well, this is third and eight. You see all the signs again. Ole Miss's two touchdown drives have been 94, 93 yards. And Louisville threatening to get a three and out. And the Rebels had good field position oh. to start, and it's going to be third and 13 now. I'll start offense, number 54, five-yard penalty, third down. That is Caleb Warren, a sophomore from Louisville, Mississippi, where they pronounce the S. <laughs> Left guard just raises up. <laughs> Tried to freeze, no, maybe they didn't see me. Right. Parrish still in the game. See if Corral can convert on third down. Plenty of time and plenty of room to run. Matt pulls it out of there. It's up around the 50. He needed to get to the 46, and he's going to be short, but here comes a flag in at the end. A personal foul coming. Just trying to hustle, but makes a, a mental error that broke her. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, the, the, you know, Lane Kiffin said dropping eight hurt us last year. He threw a lot of picks against that look. A couple times tonight, we're seeing the answer is don't be afraid. To, you're a great athlete. Use your feet, especially That's on third play. down. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense, number 64, 15 yard penalty. The down counts. It's fourth down. Well, Broker, you can't clean up the pile anymore, and he does. Broker's their best offensive lineman. He's an out on watch list guy. Uh, a little bit overly exuberant could, there. Could you ever clean up the pile like that? I think, I think <laughs> back in the day, Bill, Bill Billy, when you guys Billy, you're out go there every the, now and then. You're on the Big Ten out there. Do they clean the pile out like that? It was a different era, different <laughs> mentality. <laughs> but for a long time now, that's a foul. I see Bill in those cl instant classic games all the time, ESPNU. He's got his high, hat up high. Well, you had some big games back in the day, my man. Yes, sir. You did. Great place to hang out. Yeah. Big bowl games, too. A lot of piles being cleaned up in all those games, too, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> he so was very strict. A much needed stop for the Louisville defense. And Braden Smith fielded the punt to keep it from rolling anymore, but didn't have any. Where to go? Ravens and Raiders start our Monday night football season, 8 o'clock Eastern time. ABC, ESPN, ESPN2, Plus and Deportes, we've mentioned Eli and Peyton Manning, in the alternate broadcast on ESPN2. That all gets cranked up. What'll be a terrific weekend on the variety of platforms. You, do you have an NFL team you like? Or you kind of like watching the guys in college go to the NFL and that, play? That's where I am now. When, yeah. I, when I was a kid, I was a diehard New Orleans Saints fan because Archie Manning was my favorite player, yeah. which will now endear me to the Ole Miss people, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. Long suffering back then, too. Into traffic, and it's intercepted. That was ill advised as Deontay Prince has the pick. And Deontay Prince is a terrific story. There is a flag back in the backfield. And it's a holding call on Louisville on Brown. 56 so this play will hold up but a late throw over the middle and an easy interception that time for Prince holding offense number 56 the penalties decline the results of the play first down Ole Miss real quick I think what he saw is Prince is up tight and then he drops back and I don't think he expected him to drop back as far as he did. He gets in that throwing lane. Anytime you're laid over the middle like that, that is a no-no, and it sets it up easy for a safety with his eyes on the football. And again, I keep going back to it. This is the same Ole Miss defense that couldn't do anything right against the pass, playing very well tonight. Well, as Corral brings his offense out here, we'll tell you a story about the man who is 
responsible for that turnover in just a second. Great field position. See if Corral tries to strike quickly. He's got Mingo on the outside, and Mingo's inside the 10. He's driving toward the pylon, and they'll mark him out of bounds just short. Kendrick Duncan kept him from scoring a touchdown. Reese, look how inside the corner is right here. He, he completely uses, loses his eyes on Drummond, who's a big, thick receiver at 220 pounds, but that inside leverage, Mingo's able to get outside and show some pretty good speed for a big man down the sideline, but the corner out of position there. And properly marked by the official. You saw his foot go out of bounds. Terrific shot from our pylon cam. Uh, Prince wearing the jewelry of a king after that interception. We're seeing if we got out of bounds a little earlier. I think Louisville thought he might have stepped out of bounds around the 15-yard line, but it's like they're moving forward. And I don't know. It's yeah, obviously that, not under review. Yeah, from that angle, it didn't appear so. Corral. Snap to give Connor is met in the backfield. Corral will try to help push him forward, but a good, sturdy presence from the Louisville defensive front keeps Connor from getting into the end zone. Okay, Kay. I'm trying to figure out how we're going to get this Prince story in because you're just right there yeah. in the big play. Big play. That happens for these early wow. well, We're going to get it. We're you're get you're going to love it. I can't wait to I hear mean, it. It is, it is a remarkable uh, story of a young man figuring things out largely on his own as Connor goes plowing into the end zone and the Ole Miss lead is 22 to nothing. It's Scott Satterfield knew even on a good night for his defense that his own offense was going to have to try to score with them. I don't think he thought he'd have a goose egg here at this point in the game and you're going to get against this offense you're going to give up plays you're going to give up points it's just part of it you either got to keep possess the ball and keep the ball away from them or you got to score with them. So Connor scores the extra point about to be attempted. So let me tell you about Prince, Kirk. He was part of the recruiting class, scholarship player in 19. Kind of stopped going to class, got tired of everything, sort of disappeared. Went to community college, and they told him after he spent a year in community college in Northeast Mississippi, they said, you can come back as a walk-on. Back as a walk-on, big pick on Labor Day night, leading to the Ole Miss touchdown. Well, it's fitting because Ole Miss is smoking them right now. 23 to nothing. Just a little over halfway through the second quarter. And Louisville desperately needs to get something going on offense. Or a long kick return from Hall would help. Powder Blue is feeling it across the way. And why not? An impressive performance not only on offense but defense especially. And good coverage on the kickoff team once again. And this Ole Miss defense, we keep talking about the job they have done tonight and where they have been a year ago. Such an emphasis on being better, taking pride. They were very upset. They've made some changes. They have some transfer players in, most notably 44, Chance Campbell. He's been all over the place tonight. Anytime Louisville has tried to run the ball, which is a big part of where their offense starts, he's been there to make plays. And then last possession, throwing it late over the middle. Prince, who Reese just told a great story about a guy that has been through a lot and has shown perseverance comes up with that interception to set up their last touchdown and put him up 23. Now the talented Malik Cunningham needs something to go his way. He had to get rid of it in a hurry. He overshoots Ford. Campbell was the guy applying the pressure. Campbell came right up the middle. Look, Look at the difference. Yeah. My I mean, goodness. 519 yards a game. The passing yards. Like I said, that, that's the worst they have done since 1915. And tonight, because Louisville cannot run the ball, they're getting into obvious passing situations, which is exactly what DJ Durkin wanted. You get you get this offense with this, uh, the, you know, still trying to find receivers and a quarterback that's not comfortable with being behind. That's a problem. Look at the running game, though. There's nowhere to go. 
nowhere to go and nowhere to hide. Tyreekus Tisdale's had a really strong first half. Yeah, I mean, you're trying to run that stretch play, but backside, he tries to cut it back because the, the play side is taken away. They got upfield, so the only thing he could do is put his foot in the ground, try to cut back, but very gap sound for Durkin. And that time it was zero. Henry stepped up the senior. Okay, Henry led the team in tackles a year ago. Coming back for his senior year from Vidalia, Georgia, in his home state. This time Cunningham has some time and pulls it out to take a run. And Mateo's going to take a big shot again. It's Lakia Henry over there. A little help from Otis Reese. It is fourth down coming, and for Scott Satterfield, whose offenses are typically very productive, this is unusual territory for a Louisville head coach. The Australian Mark Bassett has been busy tonight. Roll one for 53, and now the clock will be stopped. Replay official has stopped the game for potential targeting on the tackle. We have already had three players ejected tonight. Two from Louisville, one from Ole Miss. Now let's have a look here. And that is Lakia Henry. Bill Amanye. Unfortunately, this is another crown of the helmet situation. The head is down. He's dropped it. Forcible contact. You can see the runner's head turn sideways from it. We're going to have another targeting call. Billy, don't, don't you feel that th th this rule five, seven years ago, whenever it really started to be emphasized, it just seems to me that the coaches have done a pretty good job overall of, of working in spring and in camp across the country of getting the heads up and making making tackles the, the right way. You know, when it first came in, I thought it was more defenseless player type yeah. hits that had neck area. But it seems of late, last year, this year, we're seeing more crown of the helmet hits. So there's got to be some work done in terms of getting that head up and, and coming in looking at your at your tackle, yeah. not dropping it down. Jim's to review, personal foul, targeting defense number zero. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Number zero is disqualified for the remainder of the contest. So Mark Robinson already out, and now Henry out as well. And you know, I, this is, uh, you know, I think James Skalski had a hit like this against Justin Fields on a big stage, mm -hmm. and it's the same kind of hit. Don't get upset with the officials. I mean, you could say they're slowing the game down. What well, this is football, let them hit. This is the this is these are the the rules. <laughs> these are the rules. Yeah. So you have to if you want to change the rule, that's fine. But if it's a rule, the official's job is to follow those rules and enforce those throughout a game. And Ashanti Sistrunk, also from Louisville, Mississippi, has checked into the game now with uh, two linebackers being ejected. And the way Henry reacted is almost as if he he realized he just had led with the crown. Jordan Watkins makes the catch only the third completion of the night for Cunningham you get you get kind of a sarcastic clap from some of the Louisville fans as if hey, hey, hey positive yards all right kind of here right here right in front of us maybe some positive yards again offense that wants to stay on schedule not necessarily with the players but there is some and has been and some work has been done in terms of repairing the relationship with uh, Scott Satterfield and, and a portion of the Louisville fan base as he gets up to the 50. Uh, Scott was open about having at least a conversation with South Carolina when that job was open, and that really rankled uh, a number of the Louisville fans. So it smoothed over very quickly if, if there was even an impact with the players. But fans are a little bit um, at Louisville as Cunningham pulls it down on third down and. Pushes it, forward. It's taken every ounce of effort by Malik Cunningham to get a first down. And he did get the first down. But the fan base, perhaps scarred by the Bob Petrino years, by having uh, uh, the, both Bob Petrino eras. Uh, you know, Charlie Strong left to go to Texas, a little bit sensitive when coaches start looking around. But Centerfield is 
emphasize that he's committed to Louisville. Players certainly believe that. So that seems to have gone by the wayside after an offseason of a little bit of strife, at least among the fan base. Cunningham chased out of there by Sam Williams, and he tried to turn the corner and couldn't. He'll lose a couple. Rushing three, spying with 44 that time, Chance Campbell. Everybody else in zone with their eyes on the quarterback. Nowhere to go with the ball. And eventually, he's just got to pull it down and, and try to get something out of it. And he ends up losing a yard or two. Hassan Hall is in for Louisville. Cunningham, backward pass, who can be a double pass, and it is. Cunningham on the receiving end, and a little trickery, and still Ole Miss stays at home, limits it from being a big play. Braden Smith was the one who threw it, and Jalen Jones made the stop. That was a big-time play by 31, because there was a convoy of offensive linemen working down that left sideline with a dynamic ball carrier in the quarterback, Malik Cunningham. And if 31 doesn't somehow get around the block and make that play, there's a good chance that, that Louisville may have their first touchdown of the night. So a third and three, Louisville bailed out by a targeting call earlier in this drive. Now just hoping for a standard conversion. Cunningham throws, and that was almost intercepted. Finley had his hands on it and couldn't hold it. Uh, he, he telegraphed this and Finley did a good job of just reading his eyes but watch the quarterback watch his head here watch him look and kind of stare it down it allows Finley to jump it get in front of it surprised he didn't come up with that interception We're inside three minutes to play here in the first half fourth down Louisville hoping to get something on the board Needing to pick up this first down in Ole Miss territory and keep Matt Corral from coming back on the field already with a huge lead. Louisville's tried it once on fourth down and nine got stuffed. Play clock winding down so charge timeout. Louisville, Louisville will use their first timeout of the half and they'll try to convert on fourth down when you come back for the final 258 of the first half. Quarterback Eli Manning joins us to talk about life and retirement. Plus a big blow for Michigan's offense, and UConn is out with Randy Edsel. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway join me coming up. I promise, gentlemen, there will be no targeting during the Sling TV halftime report. Well, keep Joey under wraps there. I wouldn't count on it if Galloway's out there. I've, I've, never, I've never seen anything like this. Four targeting ejections in a game, three in the second quarter, and all justified. Yeah, three in the second quarter, four in the game. Fourth down here. Cunningham picks up the first down. And he gets it. Louisville, Louisville really needs to get a touchdown at, here before halftime. Fourth down play. Malik Cunningham doing everything he can to try to keep his team in his football game. Tremendous effort here. Nothing there. There's the pressure. Does a good job right there because that's the guy who's been giving him a headache all night, Chance Campbell. But he has a stiff arm, then his speed to be able to be uh, able to get just enough of that first down. Nice play by three. Well, the best drive since Louisville's opening drive was stopped on a fourth down. The 11th play, they've gone 50 yards. Cunningham going to get it out to Braden Smith, who completed a pass on this drive. And Sistrunk needs to be careful not to get an unnecessary roughness there. He let go wisely. Kind of keep waiting to see who's the next playmaker in this offense on the perimeter. Who's the next guy? 2 2 Atwell was so good in this offense the last couple of years. He's gone. He's in the NFL. Des uh, uh, Fitzpatrick was outstanding. He's not here. Who's going to be the next guy? Somebody's got to make some plays for this offense out on the edge. Those two had 89 catches, nearly 1,500 yards last year. Hassan Hall. Hall. A good run off the left side. It's just inside the 20. And a good double team that time as well by Bentley and Chandler. Finally give them a chance to work together and watch this. Hall in this outside stretch play. This is it. This is how you run the outside stretch. You just kind of work, find the crease, put your foot in the ground on that fifth step, and then get north and south. It's exactly what he was able to do. Third down again for Louisville. And two of eight on third down converted a fourth down to keep this drive alive 
few plays ago. Dumping out in the flat. Ole Miss is there. Marshawn Ford had it. They are just they are there. flying to the football. They're getting off of blocks. It's just, again, defense, which we missed in 2020 because of COVID and some of the restrictions and mandates. We didn't see defenses playing with this kind of passion, this kind of effort, effort this kind of togetherness. Ole Miss is an example of a defense playing with that attitude. Headed toward a minute to play, fourth down, another one on this drive. Louisville in near desperation mode in the final minute of the first half to get something on the board. Cunningham pitched it quickly, and they dropped it. He had the first down if he just holds on to the ball, and he does it, and Austin Keyes is there, and it was a stop anyway, and everything that could possibly go wrong has for Red. That's, that's exactly what Malik Cunningham wanted. Man-to-man, -man, crash him, and then you just pitch it out to the outside. It's exactly per it's perfect. You have an alley, you've got speed in the back and Hall, and Hall got so excited, he started to look up where he wanted to run and did not secure the football. Exactly, it could not have been any better for the play call and design against the, the, uh, the defense Durkin went with there on fourth down, and they just can't execute. 44 seconds is an eternity, yeah, for eternity this, yeah. for this offense. They've got 75 yards to go. Let's watch Corral go to work. Second turnover forced in the first half. And now Corral will try to make him pay. Uh -oh. And let's see the Drummond hold on to it. Yeah, he held on to that. No, look, yep. Looked like he has that. How did he get that? That is a great throw <laughs> over the corner, this. over top of the corner. And how about the focus? Looks like oh, he has possession. Man, oh, man, what a catch. Corral right back to work. He's got room to run into Louisville territory. Not down at the 45. Ole Miss has all their timeouts. All, th all three timeouts. Boy, oh, boy. That is a big-time catch. Every fingertip that he had holding on to that Right football. on the nose, too, yeah. and it didn't move. How about the throw? <laughs> he went right over top of the corner, Clark, and got that in there. There's not a throw that he can't make. There, the, the talent has never been in question. It's been on display, Molly. Guys, Matt Corral has been the emotional leader on the sideline without his head coach, Lane Kiffin, here. He went up to his offensive line. He said, keep pushing the ball down their throats. Keep doing your job. He then went straight to his wide receivers and said, if we keep pushing the ball and keep up the tempo, your shots will come. I promise you. So he's showing a lot of maturity and a lot of leadership without Lane Kiffin here. You know, Molly, what I love is what we're seeing right now is the maturity. And then every drive, our cameras have been watching him. We go to break. And I think this is just a leadership in him. He's talking to his offensive line constantly. And, you know, I think with the experience, the good and the bad experience that he had a year ago, I think these players look at him essentially like a coach, you know, because of the work that he puts in and the experience that he has in the command of this offense. Led the nation in total offense a year ago. But that growth that Molly was talking about and Kirk was talking about with the maturity, that's, that's been the one thing. And he is displaying that in abundance in the first half. Completes it out to Parrish. Picked up the first down. And got out of bounds as well. Still two timeouts. Gets out of bounds. And feels like Louisville's just holding on here, right? Just right. holding on. Trying not to let one of those seam routes hit him. Vertical seam. Corral wants that seam, but wisely dumps it down. Forward pass, whistle goes incomplete. 16 seconds to go in the half. It's actually a good thing there. Drop, drop the ball and kill the clock. For the first time I can remember, John Rice Plumley, the former quarterback, 10, is on the right slot. He's moved to receiver now, permanently moved in the bowl game last year. What a great athlete, based on the baseball team. He had six catches for 79 yards in the bowl game. Right on cue, John Rice has his first catch tonight, his first touch. Caught now down 10. Second timeout going to be used. Yeah. So you got 10 seconds here, probably time for a shot to the end zone if they want it. They're on the 27, and there's still an opportunity to kick a field goal and add a little bit more to this dominant first half. And the two long drives you expect the defense. I was willing to accept that it would be improved. But this uh, this has been really impressive against a talented offensive team. And that's the thing. I think I think Louisville has a chance to have a pretty good a pretty good offense this year. 
and a quarterback that can make plays with his feet and with his arm and they've not been able to do that and I, I think you're right I think it's DJ Durkin the new defensive package where they're playing with three down line two backers and and six defensive backs that that Iowa State John Haycock approach that a lot of defenses are implementing uh, Lane Kiffin told me today he goes I'm, I'm trying to suggest to coach Durkin to putting in defenses that give me a hard time and that's a big part of the reason they went to that look They've held Louisville under three yards to play, averaging better than seven and a half themselves. Corral gets it complete. Drummond needs to head for the boundary, and and he does. And clock stops with four seconds. This offense does such a good job. I mean, you know it's coming, and yet they create one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And there's so much space with these receivers stretched sideline to sideline. They know how to create matchups that are favorable to them. And these guys have so much space to work in. And you, you clear out the corner. Then you put the inside receiver back outside there. Now two has about a five to seven yard cushion. And, you know, it's it's just it's really a, a tough offense to defend. Corral's hit 13 of 20 in the first half, 252 yards. Touchdowns have come on the ground. No touchdown passes yet. And now Ole Miss is going to send out the field goal unit and try to put the finishing touches on what has been a complete first half for the Rebels, the freshman Caden Costa, who made his first collegiate field goal from 47 yards out. A much shorter attempt this time. They wouldn't try anything crazy here, would they? Well, just up 23, just easy field goal, take the points? I think so. 22-yard attempt, get the freshman a little confidence. A little more after Louis he hit the 47-yarder. has yarder. 10 players out there. And he popped it right through there with a line drive right back up the middle and Corral and the Rebels will take a 26 nothing lead. There's the leadership we were just talking about with Molly and we we're talking about how he's really grown a little thing like that running out to, to give the kicker some love. It's good stuff. 2016 was the last time the Rebs pitched a shutout in the first half a span of 15. punch on that one. I was going to say the way they played in the first half, he might not show up the rest of the season. And Ole Miss has been fired up. His quarterback, Matt Corral, 13 of 20, 252 yards in the first half. But now Louisville gets the ball first, and the Cardinals, they've got some dynamic players on offense. Malik Cunningham's a dual-threat quarterback. You try to get something started and get back in this game. Hassan Hall on the return. All across the 20 to the 30. Hall's heading toward midfield, and he is run out of bounds. I told you earlier, he's taken a couple to the house in his career, and he gives Louisville and Cunningham great starting field position here in the second half, Kirk. Well, it, they needed good field position. We were talking at the break, you know, four possession game. You got to go some tempo yourself. They've been very methodical because they want to try to keep the ball away from Corral. That may have to change, obviously, if they are able to see what they can do with this first possession. But they've got to try to mix up. They've got to get the run game going. The problem is, you know, you, you need to throw. But this offense is not built to get behind by 26 and work their way back. So it's still going to be a combination of running to try to get the, uh, the throw game going. 59-yard kickoff return. Cunningham starts at the Ole Miss 41. Completes a pass. Had a tough first half throwing. Only 17 yards in the first half. But got it to Marshawn Ford. Yeah, and Ford is, is a player that I know that Scott Satterfield had mentioned to Molly McGrath. He needs to step up in the very first play. He gets an opportunity against zone. He sits down in a soft spot and makes a nice play. Cunningham keeps it himself. There's a flag flying back toward the line of scrimmage as Cunningham gets it down That's inside the five. That's a hold on yeah. Cole Bentley. It'll come back. You know, Lane said, Lane said to Molly he's happy with the... Number 66, 10-yard penalty, first down. He's happy with the safeties and how physical they are. I've, I've been really impressed with what they've been doing at the front. Quentin Bivens has had a, a monster game, 94. Not just being physical, but using quickness. And we've talked the entire first half about Chance Campbell, 44, the transfer from Maryland. Jake Springer also playing well, the Navy transfer. It's a very different looking defense this year compared to a year ago. 
And the numbers that Ole Miss put up in the first half on defense, the best total defense performance since 2014, fewest passing yards since 2016 in the first half. Pat Cunningham doubled his first half passing total with that one completion to start here in the second half. He's got a second completion here and the catch by Jordan Watkins and Watkins spins down to about the 25 near the original line of scrimmage. You know, we're waiting for a receiver to emerge and we've seen the, the, the big tight end Ford and this time Watkins. And I'm sure that that's something that Scott Satterfield and his offensive staff said, hey, we're going to have to throw it to get back in this game. And we're going to have to have some receivers start to step up and make some plays, whether it's zone or man. And both these times it's been against zone, and they've sat down nicely in the soft spot in that zone. Second and 11. Cunningham shows the ball and close to the 23rd down coming Campbell on the stop. Yeah, Campbell's just sitting there, these obvious passing downs, just sitting there staring into the eyes of Malik Campbell, spying him. Gives you an idea, by the way, of what they think of Chance Campbell. And he steps into the SEC out of the Big Ten, and he's asked to spy a really athletic quarterback. Again, that's great speed, great instincts to be able to make plays in space against him. Third down and six. Facing Cunningham. The card's just two of eight on third down in the first half. Cunningham running out of time has to throw it. He was outside the tackle box. Got a pass line of scrimmage, so no grounding. It'll be fourth down and six. Well, look, look at the coverage here. They do a good job of taking this away. They have it out here, and they're trying to go kind of a, an over-under read. Look at the coverage take everything away. Even the backside receiver, nothing open. And there's nothing he can do. They're going to try to, I guess, settle for trying to get points on the board. Uh, you mentioned it. It's... It's a four possession game, but this still leaves you, if you're successful, it leaves you down 23, which would necessitate some two point conversions. A 38 yard field goal attempt coming for James Turner. Turner sends it on his way. And something positive for Louisville on this opening drive of the second half. Would have loved a touchdown, but putting up a three spot perhaps is a place to start for Louisville. It's where safe and daring seamlessly intersect. It's understated, yet over delivers. It is truly the Mercedes-Benz. Well, today, Chick-fil-A welcomed the 2021 Chick-fil-A Scholars Restaurant team members who received scholarships through Chick-fil-A's Remarkable Futures Initiative. 2021, Chick-fil-A invested $19 million in college scholarships awarded to nearly 7,500 team members. That reinforces Chick-fil-A's longstanding commitment to education, helping team, team members achieve their academic dreams. And congratulations to all of those scholars. Louisville got on the board with a field goal for the opening drive of the second half. Now it's incumbent on the Louisville defense to play as well as Chance Campbell and the Ole Miss defense have. Brock Travelstead kicks off for the Cardinals. Fair catch called for, and, and the Rebels will start on their 25. Next Saturday, 4.30 Eastern time, Iowa and Iowa State. We'll see where those two are ranked when the new poll comes out tomorrow. I have a feeling Hawkeyes are going to move up. Cyclones, a top 10 team coming in. College game day will be there to get it started in Ames. Really looking forward to that trip and the game. It ought to be a dandy and Washington. They're not going to have that 20 beside their name by the time they get to the big house after losing to Montana. But Michigan, despite the loss of Ronnie Bell, looked impressive in their opening win. Yeah, I thought Iowa, a game that maybe some people a little bit off their radar, but Iowa pounded a good Indiana team. Darian Ely is wrapped up, swarmed under a big loss on the first play of the second half for Ole Miss. Ashton Gelate was back there. First got a little help from Keetrell Clark. Yeah, not, nice job here at getting off blocks and showing some speed here to be able to get out there. Really nowhere to go. One of the few plays we've seen Ole Miss go backwards the whole game. A loss of eight for the talented Ole Miss running back. Now second and long. 
Corral, plenty of time, fires a dart, and that'll take care of that 18. He needed in a few extras as well. And Ely was on the catch. Yeah, they, they do a good job of creating a little bit of confusion where you get upfield, takes the linebacker with him, and then you see Ely work right behind where they cleared out with Plumley. So you're worried about Plumley. You take him away, you think we're good, and then right behind him comes Ely. Corral put it in Ely's belly and pulled it out, and has a good, quick run. See, this is what I think the good teams in the SEC West, you're going to have to be most concerned about. It's one thing about the tempo that's frustrating and concerning and the speed on the perimeter, but you, you sleep on two and his ability to run, and he's going to make you pay for it. What an athlete he is. I mean, he's known for the arm, but he's got great feet. Going back to the arm, John Rice Plumley with his second catch, and he's upended almost immediately after making the grab. Greedy Vance on the stop. You know, you mentioned Corral's ability to run. He had 3,300 yards passing, over 500 rushing. It's a pretty select fraternity that's done that. Among the members, Trevor Lawrence, Jalen Hurts, Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson. Pretty good group. Deshaun. <laughs> that works. You know. That works. Uh, Corral was trying to connect with the former quarterback Plumley there, and John Rice wasn't looking back yet. Yeah, that's a, again. Remember, Plumley's making the move from quarterback out to receiver. Th this blitz right here means quick side adjust, and the receiver's got to see that. There's no one there to pick him up. He's got to come off that route and be ready. Now this time the throw was behind Plumley, so it'll bring up fourth down. But they're on the plus side, and the offense staying out there. Now kind of frustrated with himself on that one. Matt approaching another 300-yard passing game. He's got 279. On fourth down, slant, first down, maybe more. Another big catch from Dontario Drummond. Drummond, who has a touchdown in five straight games coming in, hasn't reached the end zone yet, but he has a 17-yard pickup, and he's over 100 yards on the night. See how that soft cushion on fourth down, Cole has got to get up tight to try to disrupt that timing, but he was so soft, it made it so simple. The crowd must have looked out and saw that cushion and said, oh, you're just going to give me the first down. All right, we'll take it. He just announced that uh, I think Braylon Sanders is some type of uniform violation. Those powder blues, I'm not sure there's anything that could constitute a violation there. Ely. Darian pushing the pile, trying to get it down close to the 20. It'll be second and short. People think of Ole Miss, they think of Lane Kiffin, they think of they're going to throw on you, and they do. 345 a game last year. But this team will pound you at the line of scrimmage and run, too. Ely's got it again. He's got a first down. He's down to the 15. Louisville trying to rip the ball out. The number one rushing offense in the SEC in 2020 is Ole Miss. But, but if you talk to your average fan, the perception is, yeah, they run a little bit. Led the SEC in rushing. So it's a, a really balanced attack that Jeff Levy has here. First and ten, Corral. Oh, starting to run, and now he's got his first touchdown pass of the season. It's Jerry and Ely. Well, that's a lot on a linebacker. OKK thinks it's a quarterback draw. Line of scrimmage is right at the 15-yard line. And he... Looks like they're probably talking about it. If he's seen a legal forward pass, I mean, he was right at the 15 when he got rid of it. And that was a receiver downfield offense. Well, that's number 51, five yard penalty, first down. Omana, the, the, the center, also they could have gotten the yeah. right guard, Ben Brown. You had two guys downfield, but the timing from the quarterback, you're going to see two linemen that work their way blocking, but right here, 15 yard line. He just baits the linebacker right here. Quarterback draw, quarterback draw. He, he got rid of it in time. It's just a lineman thinking about it's going to end up being yeah. the quarterback draw because he has the option to run it depending oh, on yeah. what that linebacker does. And the linebacker comes up, he's, he's going to throw it. They've got to stay at about a yard or two, not get any further down downfield. 
and take the touchdown off the board and back to the ground with Parrish. Vance with another tackle. A, that's a cool play. Give it, the quarterback the option on a draw or the, the pop pass. And if if the linebacker comes up, you just get rid of it. Or if he stays back, take off and run. But the, the guard and center that time, just a little bit too far downfield. Well, that's what all the defensive guys will tell you is yeah. cheating because they yeah. give him three well, yards time, in college. That time they called it, though. Yeah, they did. Good astute work by the officials. They're not just keeping an eye on targeting. Second down and 14. Quick pitch out to Parrish. And Parrish is knocked down immediately. Good aggressive play from Jack Fago, who now playing linebacker, moving down from safety. You know, in a 3-4 defense, linebackers got to make tackles. And Fago making his move to that card linebacker spot this year, kind of that hybrid, doing a good job playing in space, getting off that block and, and getting upfield. As you said, Maurice, very physical tackle. Corral throwing to the end zone at a man in the back just out of the outstretched arms of Braylon Sanders. So it'd be fourth and 16 and Rebels will send the field goal unit out another look. Waiting for Sanders to make a big play. You know, when I look at him and think about Lane Kiffin, at USC he had so many good receivers and a lot of times that one receiver would have 85 catches and the next closest guy would have 22. Mm -hmm. Robert Woods was that kind of guy when he was out at SC and, and Lane to me when I look at, at what this guy could be this year it's Braylon Sanders could be a Robert Woods type of guy for Ole Miss. He's able to do it with Marquise Lee to him with Amari yeah. Cooper in Alabama. He's, yep. he's made a made quite a living of Feeding the ball to great receivers. This is a 38-yard field goal attempt that is true. The youngster knocks another one through, and the Rebs answer the Cards' field goal with one of their own. He is just college football being back. Tallahassee, Bill Campbell alive. We haven't seen that like that in years. And then to see Mackenzie Milton come off the bench, devastating injury, wondered if he'd be okay after the 18 injury, would he ever play again? And he came back, led the Knowles into overtime, and then Notre Dame, 41-38, finds a way to win on the road, survive in advance. But man, I, I watched that game, and I thought as much about Florida State as I did Notre Dame. No question, it was a great win for the Irish, and a great win to have Mackenzie Milton Back on the field, all of college football, really all of sports, rooting for him after that horrific leg injury. Had to make sure they saved his leg first, and the thought of him playing football seemed almost incomprehensible. And there he was last night playing. Again, it was just great to see after his terrific career at UCF. Louisville up in as we check in with Molly. Well, Herbie, you said that Louisville's wide receivers need to step up. Well, Scott Satterfield told me that's not possible because Malik Cunningham isn't distributing the ball well enough. He said he's not going through his progressions. He's scrambling too early. And he said, I can tell his confidence has taken a hit. He's rattled a little bit, and I can tell from his body language on the sideline that he is not fully with it right now, guys. It's interesting because his entire offseason, he and his quarterback coach, that's, what they, that's really what they worked on. Last year with a clean pocket, if everything was timed up perfectly, it's pretty accurate. But when things got a little messy, he struggled and would take off and run. They wanted him to be more patient in the pocket and work through progressions. But uh, based on what you just said, Molly, and what we're watching, you know, we, it's one thing for us to see it. It's another thing for the head coach to be frustrated about it. Uh, Mitchell picked up about eight. You know, one thing about... Mitchell's timeout, injured offensive player. Malik in the offseason, and... That is, the injured player is Shy Works. You might recognize the name. He was a terrific option quarterback for Georgia Southern, transferred to Louisville to play receiver. Thought that gave him a better chance. He was the second leading rusher in Sunbelt history among quarterbacks at over 3,000 yards rushing. Started 46 games. Georgia Southern the Eagles at quarterback. More than 6,000, approaching 7,000 yards of offense. You hope that's not a serious injury for for works. Iowa and Iowa State Saturday afternoon and then it'll be Washington and Michigan. Reese Hall, Cade McNamara hoping to lead their respective teams to 
huge non-conference wins. Yeah, Ames is going to be rocking Jack Price Stadium. Will doubtless be full and alive. They try to take down the Hawkeyes. Something's been a bit of a thorn in the Cyclones side. Over really over all of their history, but certainly in recent years with these terrific Iowa State teams. Still hoping to climb that mountain starting on Saturday. Cunningham flips it out. Catch from Josh Johnson, who's end of the game. And it's a first down for Louisville in that Iowa Iowa State game, college game day, built by the Home Depot. Kirk Lee, Desmond, David, Gene Mojahowski, Jen Latta. Our whole game day family will be in Ames. Second time that the show has made it. In the home of the Cyclones, Cunningham pulls it down to run. He evades one tackle, but not the second one, as Dean Leonard is up to make the stop. We were there in what 2019? Yeah, two years ago, I believe, for the for this same Cyhawk game. Had a great reception, great crowd there. I don't think Iowa State was ranked. Uh, at the, what are they right now? Ten Go, going into tomorrow's poll. To Who's that? Eight? Iowa State. I, eight. Yeah, they, were they. Yeah, they were the highest ranking. Uh, yeah, the highest ranking they ever had. Uh, coming off of last year after that sensational trip to the Big 12 championship game falling short and taking care of Oregon in the bowl game is Cunningham completes the pass to Amari Huggins Bruce Huggins Bruce a very talented guy who's still learning the intricacies of the position as a watch freshman. this watch this with Campbell on the blitz last second waits until he clears the backer and gets rid of the football Really nice job. Campbell almost gets to him. And that time Cunningham waited, 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 and got the ball out. Cunningham gets it out again. Another completion, and Malik starting to find a little bit of rhythm. And Johnson starting to make a few plays. 11's second catch on this, uh, this drive. That time he just kind of sat down to the outside. And as you said, Cunningham get, got the ball out on time and put it away from the defender. Got to got to play. Maybe take a shot downfield, second and a half a yard. Go to the ground with Mitchell, and there's a flag coming out as Mitchell rumbles down to the 25. That's another holding call. Offensive line, Chandler, 55. Holding. Offense number 55, 10-yard penalty, second down. Sometimes when when he's not making plays, Campbell he gets through and watch the guard who wants to go wide, but feels 44 and he has to come back, just because of that penetration. And by coming back, he has to hook him to prevent him from getting into the backfield. So even when he's not making tackles, he's impacting this this offense. And Campbell. The uh, defensive coordinator, D.J. Durkin, the former head coach at Maryland, was familiar with Chance from, from his recruitment. Had a good career at Maryland four games last year. Averaged 11 tackles per game. Chance's brothers and Navy SEALs. Dad played at Penn State. They rave about his athleticism. He walked into a shoot as Johnson makes another catch. A photo shoot in the preseason was wearing slides. Slipped his slides off. It was in a basketball gym grabbed the ball and jumped up and dunked it <laughs> well, he, he's a he's a really good athlete you can see that tonight and I, I, what, I, what I've seen are the instincts to go along with the speed and the experience of playing it at Maryland he's picked up this uh, DJ Durkin defense that you mentioned he was familiar with parts of and aspects of it in Maryland Mitchell runs through a tackle, drags another guy with him. He's got the first down and still pushing forward and driving those feet and getting inside the 25 and down to about the 22. That is a great run. He runs right through the nose guard on third down, showing some physicality. That's a big man that he just ran right through, a 300-pounder in K.D. Hill, and then he's not done. See my offensive lineman helping him out. That is a great job there by Louisville, showing a little bit of spunk here in the second half. Inside five minutes to play in the third quarter. I'd like to get one in quickly if they could. Catch by Jordan Watkins down to the 15. Need about two and a half yards or so for the first down. More than anything, Reese, there's just some urgency about them that we, we it was Nolan Void absolutely didn't see it in the first half. And they're moving the ball the two times they've had it. They're, they're doing a better job of mixing up the play calling. And I think they're competing a lot more at the offensive uh, front. 
giving uh, the quarterback and these backs a little bit better of a chance to, to compete. Back to the ground. And Austin Keys is there to stop Mitchell. On the first down. And Keys getting a little more playing time. Couple of Ole Miss linebackers ejected for targeting in the first half. This, this is where, again, with the feet and athletic ability of Cunningham, this is where you, you, you'd like to see him out on the, on the outside where he's got the option to run, to throw. Puts a lot of stress on a defense down in the red zone area. There's Mark Robinson, one of the linebackers we mentioned, Lakia Henry, the other. Two of the four players, two from Louisville, also ejected the targeting in the first half. Cunningham feeling a little heat. He gets away from Williams, and he's just going to throw it out of bounds. Well, Sam Williams was putting the heat on Cunningham. Ole Miss has shown some signs of having a couple of explosive players on the edge to rush the passer. We've talked a lot about the way Campbell has played. Springer has been an important part along with Reese in the secondary. Totally different looking defense from the one we saw a year ago. Defensive coordinator DJ Durkin making sure everything's all hooked up, all the cables taken care of. Boy, Mitchell's been running Running tough here on this drive in the second half. Pushes it down to about the six. Third down's coming. I, I'm going to guess that this Quentin Bivens is going to be up for player of the game for this defense. I mean, it's, it's sometimes hard for the fans that you watch the football. Sometimes you're seeing a lot of Chance Campbell and some of the others making plays where you can see it. But 94 is doing a lot of work in the middle of this defense tonight for Ole Miss. Third down and five. Hassan Hall is now in the backfield. Along with Cunningham. Remember, they went speed option because they played man. And if Hall didn't drop it, it probably had a touchdown earlier. See if they go back to that. Just beats the play clock. Cunningham keeps it. He'll be stopped short of the first down. A.J. Finley on the tackle along with Campbell. And it'll bring up fourth down. How about the effort again by Campbell? Watch him right here. Gets caught up in the inside, does not want to give up on the play. He's on his all fours, still trying to get out there and help out with the safety, Finley. At this juncture of the game, he took points on the last drive. Can't do that again, obviously. So Louisville will try to get in the end zone, see if they can set themselves up to make a run here at Ole Miss. Fourth down and three coming. Cunningham firing to the end zone. It's a touchdown for Braden Smith. But there is a flag. He may have hit the quarterback yeah. late. Yeah, he signaled roughing the passer. I think. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number seven, the blow to the head. A 15-yard penalty be enforced on the kickoff. The score is good. Smith right here. Finley soft and with an outside receiver and a defensive back, easy to get outside and not enough time for Finley to catch up. A good call there by Scott, uh, Scott Satterfield. And Louisville gets their first touchdown of the night and the season. And the extra point coming to cut it to 19. And with that penalty that's going to be enforced on the kickoff, Pretty obvious opportunity for an onside kick to see if Louisville can get it back. Go back to back and maybe make a little fourth quarter run at the Rebels. Got to start someplace, and they do with a touchdown toss to Smith. your deodorant keep you fresh all day? We put Dove Men deodorant to the test with Nelson, a volunteer that puts care into everything he does. It really protects my skin. It's comfortable and it lasts a long time. Dove Men, 48-hour freshness with triple action moisturizers. Attention foodies. 
With this fusion of prime rib steak, melted provolone, and other magical melty stuff, Arby's is now officially a fusion restaurant. Chef Smooch. Arby's, we have the meat. Finding new routes to reach your customers and new ways for them to reach you is what business is all about. It's what the United States Postal Service has always been about. So as your business changes, we're changing with it, with e-commerce that runs at the speed of now. Next day and two-day shipping nationwide, same-day shipping across town, returns right from the doorstep, and deliveries seven days a week. It's a whole new world out there. Let's not keep it waiting. With DirecTV Stream, I can get live TV and on demand together. Watch Serena Williams, Wonder Woman. Serena, Wonder Woman. Serena, Wonder Woman. You cannot be serious! Get your TV together with the best of live and on demand. Introducing Direct TV Stream with no annual contract. At USAA, we've been called too exclusive because we were created for officers. But as we've evolved with the military, we've grown to serve all who've honorably served, no matter their rank or when they were in. A Marine just out of basic or a petty officer from 73, and even his kids and their kids. USAA is made for all who've honorably served and their families. Are we still exclusive? Absolutely. And that's exactly why you should join. Monster Jab fires up the engines. See these athletes push their trucks to the limit. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the grind. This is Monster Jam. Brought to you by Great Clips. Get your savings coupon from participating Great Clips salons and save 20% on select tickets. Coming to Allstate Arena September 17th through 19th. A little lion. Ah, uh, yes. The king of the jungle. Time for a Red Bull. Red Bull? Still, you'll never be faster than a lion. I don't have to be quicker than the lion. Just faster than you. Red Bull gives you wings. Fur, you won't phase me. Unlike Zyrtec, Allegra won't make me drowsy. And Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. So when allergies attack, take Allegra before your symptoms take over you. And for congestion relief, find Allegra D at your pharmacy. All right, Malik Cunningham just threw a touchdown pass. Louisville is down 29 to 10. It was a roughing the passer penalty on the touchdown. Louisville kicking off from the 50, and they've sent out a specialty unit, including Ryan Chalifu, who hasn't been the kickoff man tonight. Pretty good opportunity to try your best onside, your best pooch, whatever gives you an opportunity to try to steal a possession and see if you can Get in position to give Ole Miss a finish. Keep your eye on Jordan Watkins, bottom of your screen, speed guy receiver. They tried the pooch. This might be a little too deep. And it'll be Ole Miss's ball on the 25. My spotter's a former kicker, Mike Black. He just threw his pen into the air. Eli's Places is coming up. Two-time Super Bowl champion. Has his own version on his brother's signature show. He's going to go all around the country to give you a chance to see some of the most storied and historic college football places, meet with some giants of the sport. And guys like John Stewart, Ole Miss number 10, Eli Manning jersey, still very popular. You can see Eli's places on ESPN. Manning brothers have a TV empire work, don't they? They sure do. To the ground, Snoop Connor. And Snoop's had a good night, scored a touchdown. And that's about 12 on that. And first down for the Rebels to start the drive. Again, that has a lot to do with how they're able to run the ball. You are stretched out so far, worried about the pass, that it opens up your little bit light in the box, and you're able to you're able to run the football. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the room they have to run. And Corral found that alley. They had that bunch formation at the top. He rode it and pulled it. Another good pickup. Be just a little bit short of the first down. Inside 90 seconds to play here in the third quarter, second and one. And Connor's going to pick up the first down and get near midfield. The only way 
that you can defend a, an offense of this style, and there are, there are a number of them out there that kind of broken off from Art Bryles. Over the years, I've seen is this Jeff Levy, who was there with Art Bryles and Kendall Bryles, is you got to have defensive linemen where you, when you are light in the box, they can disrupt things and, and take away the run enough. But when you have to start committing down and worrying about that run game, it, you're, you're creating one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and that's where they, that's where they start laughing. You know, that's what they want. And our Bryles is also just father in -law. You know, we did see people give the defenses give Levy and this offense some trouble last year, rushing three, dropping eight, forcing them to be patient. And that's where Corral had some issues, most notably against Arkansas. He threw six interceptions in that game facing that. And teams in the second half last year, that's what they did. So they spent their entire offseason thinking they'd see a lot of that again starting tonight. And they emphasize how to beat that. Corrales throws a laser to Dontario Drummond, who has another 100-yard receiving night. That, that's beautiful to see him work. He was convinced he was going to go off to the right, thought he had the matchup that he wanted. It wasn't there. So he comes all the way back to his third option and makes a great throw. Now, he, he's convinced based on the look. He, he has that look, but you could see that he gets caught up. So he works all the way back to the left side and has an answer. Well, Drummond's been the go-to guy tonight. Six catches, 143 yards. And as the final seconds wind away here in the third quarter, Ole Miss has a 19-point lead. The defense has been exceptional. And now they're threatening to get a little bit more. Four fingers in the air, fourth quarter. Just about to reach the 11 o'clock hour in the East, starting the fourth quarter in our game here. Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt coming up as soon as we're done. Herbie will stick around to join SVP and the guys on the show. Week one overreactions and reaction in his one big thing and college football's week one bad beats. Picking our super dog on game day is not a bad beat, just a beat for me. <laughs> You too. Me too. Flag coming in as Corral races and tried to cut back inside and sort of was going to put a spin move on him, I think, and fell down. Left. Yeah. There's a holding call here. Holding. Offense number 75. Ten-yard penalty. First down. Mm. It's Bryce Ramsey who's in there. Yeah, Bryce Ramsey. Watch, he's pulling around. Watch, watch this. Lane Kiffin watching this one at home saying, all right, we're going to have to work on old Bryce. Can't, can't have that now. <laughs> well, Lane, Lane said at halftime, work on the tackling because of two targeting ejections. That'd, that'd be one there, too. What do we have, four total? First half? Four total, two each team, so it's been even at least. And, and all, by the way, accurately called. Yeah, it's following the rule. Drummond's in motion. Corral finds him. Ontario Drummond inside the 15 before he's chased out of bounds. Good block from Braylon Sanders to help him out. Great location. Recognized when he had motion. Nobody ends up going with him. They, they try to bounce their coverage out that way, but they were outnumbered. He had a blocker in front of him, and he continues to have a great night. 11, 220-pounder at 6'1". He's a handful. 162 yards receiving so far. There goes Snoop Connor. Snoop puts somebody on the hood and goes into the end zone. Well, Snoop Connor is built differently than Ely and Parrish. He, he looks like an SEC running back at about 225 pounds, and he's looking to just lower his shoulder and go right over you. And that time Chandler Jones, the corner, got a feel of his power. Kind of symbolic of the night, really, for the way Ole Miss has played. They've been physical all night, both sides of the football. And microcosm and Chandler got it right in the mustache. Extra point is good and Ole Miss. Back up by 26. New Connor. A couple of touchdowns tonight. When your family gathers around a shakaroni from Papa John's, you're sharing more than extra cheese and support. Donate at redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross respond to and help people recover uh, from Hurricane Ida. 
good cause, if you can contribute to that, it would be greatly appreciated and impactful for the people in need. Ole Miss has scored on all six trips into the red zone, four touchdowns, couple of field goals. And the Rebels, perhaps most heartening to their fans, they held Louisville to 10 points and a total of 217 yards. We're almost a minute into the fourth quarter. And on the return is Hall, he'll get out to the 30, and Malik Cunningham and the Louisville offense will try to get things going. Now, the new AP poll is going to come out tomorrow. The preseason top 10 looked like this. North Carolina uh, went down. You see there were some close games. Notre Dame had to escape last night, as you saw, Iowa State. Uh, Iowa State, you know, keeps it pretty bland a lot of times in that opening game. Northern Iowa always plays them tough when Clemson and Georgia at the top five showdown. What changes for you? Do you Georgia obviously goes to two. Did you make a case for them to go to one? Well, you made a point there at the break about just based on their opponent, but Alabama just looked like a machine. And what, the way they played against Miami, and we don't know how good Miami is, but for me, it's more about my, uh, Alabama looking more complete. Offense, defense, special teams. Sometimes you just sit there and look at it. That's week one. They, they, they look like they're mid-season form, you know? You know, in this stadium, SEC championship game later on, and SVP is going to put this on his week one overreaction, but, you know, what if we have a one versus two SEC championship game? Ashante Sistrunk is there to take down Cunningham. And this is a big weekend with the SEC and and the ACC playing each other in a few games. You know, anytime you want to try to get bragging rights, you want to get into these games and and just compete. You know, we've had this one tonight. Of course, we had the Miami Alabama game. We had the Clemson Georgia game. And uh, SEC has done a pretty good job, obviously, in all three of those games. You know, Clemson battle they competed. They did, yeah, I mean um, that, that was a. That was a f I enjoyed that game. That was a heavyweight, I mean, yeah. heavyweight bout. Uh, the other two games have, have been pretty convincing. Yeah, it hasn't been a productive uh, Labor Day weekend. The flag comes flying in. Hasn't been a productive Labor Day weekend trips to Atlanta for the ACC teams between Louisville and Miami against their SEC opponents. But, you know, to me, I look at Florida State last night. Even Virginia Tech beating North Carolina. Some people are down on North Carolina. I, I thought Justin Hamilton had that defense flying around. I, they look great. I mean, that's Holding. Defense, number 20, 10-yard penalty, and automatic first down. I know they didn't score a lot of points either, but you see some flash from the Virginia Tech offense of Braxton Burmeister. Yeah, Burmeister looked great. Um, but, you know, it was Duke losing late to Charlotte. It was mm -hmm. some of the other games. It wasn't just the SEC, ACC matchups. Yeah. Uh, Georgia Tech was a 20-point favorite. The Bear points out, and they lost at home in Northern Illinois. Tough start for them. You mentioned Duke. And, you know, of that list, the one you would say, okay, I'm going to circle that one and say, there's no such thing as a moral victory when you're at Florida State. But given everything that's happened, you could really take some heart from what happened to Tallahassee. Absolutely. I, 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 yeah. The other ones are sort of disheartening, to be honest about. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I thought that Florida State, they got down in the last three or four years. That, that would have been it. They would not have fought back, and they did. Uh, and, and their crowd was behind them. It was, it was the way it's supposed to be in Tallahassee. And yeah. I know they came up short, and they're not into moral victories, but go back and think about where Mike Norvell and the Knowles were a year ago. And what, you know, he had some issues and, you know, the players weren't really playing hard and, and terrific offseason. This team's buying into what he's he's coaching, he and his staff. And um, I can't wait to see their next couple weeks to just kind of see if they use that as a springboard to realize you guys are on the right path. I mean, you're, you, you definitely, you keep that love for one another and that passion and, and play together. And I think Mackenzie Milton and Jordan Travis really help. They can grow around the energy that both those guys provide. Travis was the epitome of class as the ball is thrown down the middle to Marshawn Ford. Ford gets down close to the 30-yard line. Works over the middle, and second time, he, you know, he feels comfortable with that, those throws. That's probably where he's been most accurate. 
is waiting for those outside receivers to clear over the middle and wait till they get into that that throwing lane between those two backers. That time he had enough time. Good job of the line giving him enough time to make that throw. It took a little while for that play to develop. Sam Williams, the player that was shaken up, he's had a good night rushing the passer, putting heat on Malik Cunningham throughout the evening. He's a guy that Kiffin and Durkin believe can be a premier rush end. Almost a no-go there to break up the pass over the middle. I want to go back to the point that you have you've made on game day and that we're seeing exemplified here tonight and probably at Florida State too. Because of the pandemic last year, the defensive teams weren't able to spend as much time together. It even makes it, it makes it that much worse if you're a new coaching staff like you had last year at Ole Miss and at Florida State. And guys now through the offseason, through having a normal spring practice, they've had a little bit more time to bond. I know when we were talking to Kiffin. He said, you know, look, it's still an offensive game, but you may see some of the defenses sort of sort of fight back a little bit more and some of those crazy numbers we saw last year might not be as normal in week zero our opening comment of the year was what where are we and I, my opening comment was for the season get ready for defenses to make a comeback the the notion that defenses don't matter you just got to outscore people will not happen as much this year and it had everything to do with exactly what we talked with Lane Kiffin about defense is about spending time together working hard together running to the football together and you do that by hanging out with each other it could be at the apartment going out to dinner just building a, a strong chemistry because defense is all about a love for each other and and we're going to play and fight for each other and this defense it's remarkable of all the games i watched this weekend we watched a ton it's one week it's a long way to go obviously but from where they were to where they are right now and how they look this defense has improved as much as anybody I've seen in the country. Cunningham firing to the end zone. Well, the next game for Ole Miss is Austin P. And by the way, Lane Kiffin, assuming everything goes well, and we certainly hope it does, uh, tells us he would be cleared to come back the day before that game. Then after that, Tulane, which now feels a little bit different after they yeah. went to Norman yeah. and lost by five. Yeah. And then it's followed by Alabama. Okay. Remember bit. last year, they, they scored, I don't want to say it will, but they, they put it on Alabama's defense yeah, last they did. year. Yeah, they did. And they got a different defense this year. Going down the middle, a strike complete. Going back to that look. Those, yeah. bit, those blitzing linebackers was able to get inside leverage. And he just looks like that's his that's his throw. That's his ball that he likes is that inside outside to inside route. And Cunningham pulled it and he was wrapped up immediately. Sistrunk on the stop. That last catch on the throw down the middle was made by Justin Marshall. Good job staying home again. One takes the Otis reset time, take took the back, forcing Cunningham to hold on to the football. And once he went to the outside, he had two defenders there, one for the back, one for the quarterback. It's a good job again by DJ Durkin, anticipating if they go zone read, we got that taken care of. One guy takes the back, one guy has the quarterback. And guy Bivens, 94, comes back in on the second and goal play. And it'll be third down and goal as push forward and get it down to about the two. Mitchell on the carry. We've not called Otis's, Otis Reese's name a ton tonight, but they, the, the coaches would tell you as the season goes on, three in blue will be a, a name that'll be just as instrumental as Chance Campbell, 44. I mean, Campbell's made a lot of plays, but I think you'll see three have nights throughout this year the way Chance Campbell's Start playing tonight. Out. But it's good to see the special teams coordinator who has to communicate with officials for timeout. Hustler to get his sprints in right there. Had a little personnel issue there. Catch your breath, big fella. My name is Leslie. My favorite thing about the grilled chicken club is the grilled chicken. Like it's actually been on a grill. As soon as you grab it to go take your... What a scintillating season he had. He had 
The Cardinals at number three in the AP poll. Then on November 17, 2016, they went down and they played Houston. Ed Oliver and company dominated the game. They sacked him nine times, and since that point, uh, really, they, they stepped into an empty elevator shaft with what Scott Satterfield, after the departure of Bob Petrino, is trying to get fixed. Malik Cunningham throws incomplete. It'll be fourth down and goal, though a flag flies in. Pass interference, defense number seven. Wow. After this is to the goal, automatic first down. Sam Williams, he just held the shoulder, held on to the shoulder of Marshawn Ford, who was trying to get out in the flat. But watch Reese here. Watch how he's able to, with his speed, get out there. There's the pass interference. Seven just grabbed on to the shoulder. But that. that I'm not sure he was beyond the line of scrimmage. We check in with Bill Lamagna there. What do you think, Bill? That, was, that pass was behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Yep. To have defensive pass interference, it's got to be beyond the line of scrimmage. Right. So is that... The line of scrimmage There's is about a one-and-a-half-yard line, and he's, he's, yeah, he's in the backfield. By rule, the... The receiver was behind the line of scrimmage. There cannot be a defensive pass interference call. The result of the play is incomplete. It's fourth down. That's that's a good job by the officials to get together and straighten yeah. that out. Yeah, they must. You know, that's what it is. You cover my back, I'll cover your back. Somebody stepped up and made that. So really nice job by the crew. I agree. So instead, it's fourth and goal now. See Sparky there in the front I, row. I did. He, he had a good seat. He, he did. Uh, Louisville's whole night's gone. Oh, he's, he's locked in. He's, he's locked he's in, now. in there. I mean, <laughs> throw, throw him on defense. The guy, he's ready, he's ready to roll. Best thing about that dog, I think he has some poodle in him. I got myself a standard poodle. Do you really? Oh, are you serious? Oh yeah, they oh, are unbelievable what, dogs. Intelligence? Or? Oh, smartest, smartest breed there is. I, I slobber around with three golden retrievers. <laughs> My, my standard poodle chases the Bears in the backfield. Wow. Cunningham pulls it down to run, and he gets into the end zone on fourth and goal. Well, the whole night hasn't gone to the dogs yet. I just love, honestly, and hey, look at my man. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, Rover deserves a treat there. What are your dog's names? I got Ben, who's the patriarch. He he run. I'm hit, he's my boss. Yeah. <laughs> I report to him. He's seven. I have Theo, and I have Mitch. Mm -hmm. How about you? Mozzie. 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 He's named after a great character played by Willie Garson on the old show White Collar. Wow, that's next level. Family show that we all watch together. Yeah. It was a big part for us. Named the poodle after him. And get better than that. Well, it's been a better night for Louisville in the past, but Cunningham getting into the end zone. <laughs> Give that man a treat. Starts a week from tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Ravens and Raiders. Monday night countdown will get things started, 6 o'clock Eastern, on all the variety of platforms. And, of course, Peyton and Eli's alternate broadcast on ESPN2. Ryan Chalafu. A little bit better effort at the pooch, but still fielded by Ole Miss as we've had a great week one of college football. Great environments, cathartic experience for so many of the fans to be able to be back in the stadiums. Here are the storylines in this venue where we are tonight. Bryce Young with his first start at Alabama. Virtuoso performance at Georgia defense was great. Just really set the tone 
for the season with some really impressive performances as Henry Parrish turns the corner, gets into Louisville territory, and is tripped up just short of the 35. I was just about to say how impressed I've been with Louisville in week one. Game's not going their way and how they're fighting, and their offense has done a good job looking much better in this second half. But uh, I'd like to see, you're, it's all about building early in the season for next week. You just don't want to shut it down. Just keep battling. No matter how bad it gets. Whoop. That is a dart to Dontario Drummond. And now Drummond has a touchdown in six straight games, but it may not stand. Oh, we've got a holding call, but you can see the safety get out of position. Drummond, as you, Reese, you talked about having a huge night, an easy throw with Jones out of position, but it'll all come back with the holding call. Who does Corral's throwing motion remind you of? Like a Baker Mayfield kind of. His temperament got a little bit of Baker when mm -hmm. Baker was in college. Mm -hmm. How about you? His flexibility in his in his upper body is is pretty remarkable. That throw, in particular, I don't think it quite had the heat on it. And there's nobody I like watching throw the ball more than Aaron Rodgers. But it, there was almost like a. <laughs> A little bit of that with that throw, that last one. Pretty one to watch. Corral pulls it down, slides at the 40. But the edge with which he plays is very reminiscent yeah, of it, Baker. I think yeah. his game just reminds his yeah. personality, the way he plays, leaves his heart out there on the on the field as far as his leadership style, constantly talking to the linemen, his receivers. And Jonathan Mingo, another of that trio of receivers at Ole Miss, so high on it. We're going to have a big season this year. Keytrail Clark. It's the thing. I was going to say, the thing about Ole Miss, when you get behind them, it's like giving somebody a head start in a race. Like, they're, they're not letting up. Like, they, there's still time on the clock. It's not like nice hit. It's not like they feel bad for you and they're going to think, oh, let's just work the clock. They're thinking, no, 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 let's just keep scoring. There is Clark, who was second team all ACC last year. He hit him as if he were aggravated. He was shaking his hand on that last play like he might have dinged something up, so he inflicted a little punishment of his own. Corral started to pull it out. Now Matt pulls it down, and so Matt runs over a guy, and it's Clark, but he held on and finally got him to the ground. That's the Baker Mayfield I'm talking about. The Baker Mayfield that's like the, the linemen, the backs. This is the leader of their team. They respond to him. He's not going to slide. They, they don't want him to take these hits all year, but that's just his personality. It's hard to take that away from him. Wow, that was a good drive. And that was easy as pie. And the one that they call back on drum and they get one back for him. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Another hum ho night for Matt Corral. 20, 21 at 31, 372, and he's got a touchdown pass. And, and how about this? Nearly half of that yardage going to Drummond, who's got a buck 68 and now a touchdown to go with it. Drummond finished the season strong, had a really good performance in the Outback Bowl against Indiana, and he's had an excellent one tonight as Ole Miss pushes the lead to 43 to 17. And for all of the terrific passes Corral has thrown tonight and all of the touchdowns he threw last year, there's his first touchdown of the season, and hotty toddy, gosh almighty, Ole Miss is rolling. thump of a trunk closing is a satisfying sound. That sound says we're leaving. We're headed. Iowa and Iowa State, 4.30 Eastern time on ABC. Going to the Cy Hawk Trophy. Of course, they couldn't play it last year because of the pandemic. Big Ten only playing conference games. Washington and Michigan, 8 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. And comes from the big house. Washington lost its opener against Montana. That's about the only thing that hasn't gone right for Ole Miss tonight. The ball fell off the tee. Could actually be win because the roof's still open. You know they can close that thing in about eight to ten minutes. Is it eight to ten? Yeah, that's what they said.
Freshman Costa. Set point toward the goal line. And Hall is looking for some running room and he's had a couple of decent returns. Ole Miss covers that one well as we check in with Molly. He's been doing some real investigative journalism. Yeah, we can add this to my Emmy reel. This is some of my best work. The dog that you guys have fallen in love with is named Abby. She's a three and a half year old Labradoodle. She is a service dog and she loves soccer. That's her preferred sport. And this is her first football game. <laughs> well, I don't, we're going to have to convert her and make soccer the yeah. second sport so that's a combination of of our dogs you got a labradoodle there you've got labradors right and I've got i have i have golden retrievers oh, you've got golden my retrievers. friends okay right. yeah my bad Just we shear them down a bit in the way. summer to make them make them look like labs try to cool them off I, I'm just still perplexed that you have a poodle well it's I because mean, when I think you, of poodle, you know I, think of, I think of I think of Smoking pipe, glasses <laughs> off the end of your nose, legs crossed, reading your favorite novel. That's a poodle to me. Right? I'm slopping well, around in the woods and the mud and the, the, the squirrels with, you know, the, with the golden retrievers. Well, first of all, this is, you know, standard poodle. He's about waist high. I don't know what he's that means. He, he's about he's standard. 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 That's a type of breed. They're miniature. They're mowing poodles and they're standard poodles. He weighs about give 65 it that, pounds. Do you give it the poodle haircut? You know, that. Uh, Not the fancy one. He, he doesn't. He didn't he go into that. For that. No. Yeah, okay. He, he has to intimidate the bears when they come close to the yard. So he can't be going out there with, you know, the crazy haircuts. You got real black bears in the back there? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Connecticut Fitting sends me videos of that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Herbie's buddy there and just pulled up a, a picture of a poodle on his phone to clue Kirk in. I got one that's a fighter, though. Oh, really? Yeah. Go to the park and. Everybody looks at them because they look like they're Disney characters, and then one of them, <laughs> one of them wants to get down and get dirty. It's kind of embarrassing. You know, the 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 the, fu the funny the funny thing about my dog is that he is mild and gentle, and you know, almost you think timid, except for two things: if a bear or bobcat comes into the backyard, the two things that actually could do him some harm. How and you, he goes. How do you how do you prevent him from not well, you getting get destroyed him. by the bears? You got to get him back in. I mean, if, <laughs> when he when he starts, you have to find a way to get him back in because that would not be a fair fight, no matter what he thinks. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm proud of him for thinking he's got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me there's a chance. Inside five and a half to go, Louisville, trying to. Have a little something to take away from this night to feel a little bit better about it. The expectations that perhaps they could they could get a victory over an SEC team. This is the first of three games in 12 days for the Cardinals. It's also one of the reasons that they were judicious, Scott Satterfield was, about how much they tackled and hit uh, during preseason camp. They certainly did, but they were mindful that uh, they've got a game against Eastern Kentucky uh, coming up on Saturday, and then they have a, uh, a Friday night game, I believe, against UCF. You know, it's funny you say that because watching the first week, I feel like you can see the teams that got physical in practices in August versus the teams that maybe don't have that philosophy anymore in 2021. Mm -hmm. You know, they, hey, nobody to the ground kind of thing. You go to some of these practices in camp, and there's some people that just don't want to be hit to the point they'll, they'll thud up, but they're not going to go to the ground. Mm -hmm. Then you go to an Alabama practice, and whew, they're playing for keeps. I mean, they are absolutely hitting you. And then you watch them in a game, and it pays off how mm -hmm. they tackle. I, Ole Miss kind of feels, I don't. I haven't talked with Lane about that. I didn't ask him how physical they were in practice, but they're, defensively, they're not just running into the ball. They're, they are hitting hard tonight. His initial reaction, Kiffin's, after their first scrimmage was that he wasn't really pleased with the defense and this sort of um, reversed course a little bit after going back and studying the tape a little bit more and was uh, uh, a little bit more pleased with DJ Durkin's defense. Well, I think we walk out of here tonight you know, depending on if you're looking at it through the Louisville side or the, or the Ole Miss. Ole Miss side is Matt Corral and his receivers and this offense are going to be great again and the difference is they look like a team. This defense looks like they have a chance to be really good this year. A completion, well-thrown ball from Cunningham finding Watkins. And for Louisville, I'm just happy that they did not shut it down. This is week one. You're going to lose this game, but if you're going to look at the film and you want to be able to grow and learn from the good and the bad, put this one behind you. It's a non-conference loss, but the fact that they're still fighting in the fourth quarter when a game got sideways on them, I love to see that. 
Cunningham turning the corner and headed to the end zone and Louisville is back in. Malik Cunningham cutting the lead to 20 much to Abby's delight I'm sure. Well, they scored right in front of her she had to be fired up there for a second. She sees that score though she knows it's not too good. Hope he's OK. He's fought through some injuries tonight. Mm -hmm. He's been limping around since the second quarter. Yeah, took a took a hit and limp to the sideline. Louisville, to your point, Kirk, about continuing to fight. And after just an abysmal first half, they've had the ball four times in the second half, and they've scored all three times a field goal in their first possession, and then they followed it up with three touchdowns. And with Lane Kiffin being back in Oxford after. Testing positive for COVID-19 remains to be seen who's going to get to wear the leather helmet, which is a tradition here, the Chick-fil-A kickoff game as it was on Saturday we, we, for Alabama and Miami. We've been talking about Lane a lot not being here. He talked with Molly a couple times, but you, you worry, though, as a head coach, you know, how will the team execute? He came up with an interesting plan. Instead of making the offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator the interim head coach or acting head coach, he went with the special teams mm -hmm. coordinator, which allowed you know the offensive coaches to worry about the offensive side, the defensive coaches to worry about their side, and I, I think you know that that's a, that's a good move. That way, he just focus in on on making the decisions mm -hmm. as far as do we you know penalties and, and things of that nature. And he was taking the coaches input. can coach. Yeah, Coleman Hutzler is the special teams coordinator who was doing that, and he was taking input on all of that through the headset and having DJ right there with him and then from Jeff Levy the offensive coordinator upstairs. It was a you know it was a smart approach too because we, we saw Hutzler run down and uh, get a timeout called at one point Louisville tries a more conventional onside kick and Ole Miss takes care of. It. Yeah Corral's had a had a great night again the different aspects of his game the accuracy look at the daring throw here over the corner right where his receiver can make a play. Here he does it. This is maybe something he does as well as anybody. Ability to read coverage. That's a book out of Lane Cook and that levels route. Puts him right on the money. And this is the thing that I think is going to be great this year. You're going to drop eight on me where it hurt me last year. Third down, I'm going to take off and go and pick up a first down. I'm not going to force the ball in. And then he finally, after throwing for 372 yards, he finally gets his first touchdown of the season. Jerry Neely. Still in Healy has a touchdown tonight. And it's time now for tonight's game track brought to you by Mission Tiger. Matt Corral, 372 passing yards. He's run for 51 more, accounted for a couple of touchdowns. So for the man who led the nation in total offense last year, 385 yards per game, he's better than that, over four bills of total offense tonight. How about this? They can work the clock. How about it? I didn't know that turbo offense could slow down for a second. It is, uh, it is potentially making them uncomfortable to have to do so. I'm not sure I'd be real anxious to do that, though. Running, no. uh, running but you crowd. can't take, again, like Baker Mayfield, you can't take that away from him. When Baker was at Oklahoma, it's just in their DNA. It's their wiring, you know, and I you could tell him in practice, OK, we're going to slide and we're not going to take as many hits this year. When he gets out there and the bullets are flying and he's competing, he can't help himself. I'm I, I 100 percent agreement. I'm suggesting perhaps it's time for seven or 12 I, to, that, that, <laughs> to, yeah. to take a few of yeah. the snaps. Now, yeah, that's true. Third and nine. And Corral. I did, Slip out and pick up the first down, but he'll be tackled short as we go inside two and a half minutes to play. Charge timeout, Louisville, third first. And we saw one, saw one snap tonight from Luke Altmeyer, highly touted freshman. That's Luke in the vest there covering up his number seven. Luke's dad. Chad is the orthopedic yeah. surgeon in Mississippi State. He's from Starkville. How about that? He yeah. leaves leaves little Dewey's for city grocery, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he looked at Florida State as well and ended up uh, wanting to stay close to home. But it's like you said, rival school from where he grew up. Fourth 
43-24, fourth and five. Center field hoping to get the ball back. Lesson to be learned, as you pointed out a couple of times tonight in continuing fight. There's not enough time to win the game, but there is enough time to set the tone for the remainder of the season. Fourth and five, Corral converts, and who else? Of course, it's Dontario Drummond with his ninth catch of the night. Been really, really impressed with him. And watching tape from last year, particularly late in the season. Yeah, he, he's an impressive, impressive receiver. And I think what's neat about this offense is one night it's going to be Drummond, the next night it might be Mingo, and the other night it might be Sanders. You know, I think they have three different guys, so I don't think you can really take away, okay, we're going to take Drummond away from them. Because I think others can are equally talented and they'll find different ways to get them the football. So that's what makes I think this group of receivers with this quarterback so tough to defend. There's three of them that can that can hurt you one on one. And Dontario's on a couple of national champions at the junior college level. Jerry and Ely. Ely goes down to the 20. Let's be honest. They're sitting on a 43, minute 38. I mean, do they yes. want half a hundred? You yes. think they're you think they're playing for half a hundred? I, he just heard me say that. He heard me say that. <laughs> well, are they going to the work the clock the, here? I think the way they're letting it go. Here's here's my guess, Kurt. Because they're not going fast, I think they're going to run plays. If they score, they'd be happy about it. But they're not going to, you know, go overboard and trying to get it. But they're going to run their offense. And Ely tossed to the ground. Ely, who's a two-sport athlete at Ole Miss, didn't play baseball this year because he had to have surgery to repair a shoulder injury from football. But he is a dynamic player that has had some good moments tonight. You'll see some more explosion from him over the course of the year. Yeah. Ely and Plumley, two really, really good athletes, great baseball players. Kind of a dying breed, you know, to see a football baseball combo playing at, at an elite level. Nice to see two on one team. And this will be the final snap. There is John Rice Plumley, who had a couple of touches tonight from his new receiver position. He played a little bit last year, the converted quarterback. And Corral will take a knee, and that's going to do it from Atlanta. So Ole Miss, without Lane Kiffin and D.J. Durkin, the defensive coordinator walking out. D.J. Durkin, they, you always want to get better. I've worked one week, but my man's got to feel really good with how this season got started for this defense. That was the emphasis in the offseason. You knew the offense was going to be good. Defense had to get better, and they have. Helmet sticker for Durkin and all of his defensive players tonight. Ole Miss beats Louisville 43-24. Producer Bill Bunnell, Director Scott Johnson, our entire crew, Kirk Molly and Reese Singh. Good night from Atlanta, where Hottie Toddy starts the season off with a win. Sports Center with our good friend Scott Van Pelt is coming up next.